Aloha from Honolulu International Airport. What a long travel day it's been, but I'm super happy I'm finally here in Hawaii. We traveled from Miami to Dallas, three hours, 90 minute connect, and then like nine hours straight to Honolulu. And now what we have to do is I have another flight, I have a 90 minute connection, and I'm flying with Hawaiian Airways all the way to the big island, the island of Hawaii, to Hilo. And this is it, guys. This is what this airport's all about. It's an open air airport. There's actually a storm about to come in. I actually feel the rain right now. But over here, you can see you have the planes. Over here on this side, we have like a garden. And we have, uh, basically the airport, the way it works is like, this, this airport's like really cool. So it's open air, but then it becomes like more like a mall, right? So you have a lot of duty free, you have shops, you have food courts, lots of good food. I want to find something Hawaiian. If not, I'll probably get some sushi, something, you know, more Asian, more Polynesian. Oh guys, I am hungry, I'm excited. So I have another flight though, so let's go find some food. My flight with Hawaiian Airlines takes off at 5.30 at B4. So there's actually A through G in terms of terminals, and I'm going to B4 right now. You can either walk it, or you can take a bus. I wanted to walk it because I wanted to see the airport. And yeah, it's right here, we're passing C, and over here is B. I've been walking around Terminal A and B for like 30 minutes and I can't find any sushi or masubi. They told me if I want masubi, I have to go to F. But unfortunately, I don't have enough time now because I'm boarding like in 10 minutes. But yeah, here all you can find are like fast food places, lots of Chinese fast food, there's Starbucks and there's bars. So let's go to B4, let's board the flight, let's fly to the big island. Hilo, here we come. Final flight of this journey, only 45 minutes, and we'll be on the big island of Hawaii. Guys, I am starving. Spam a subi. Good night. Island of Hawaii. Wow, guys, 17 hours in transit to get here. I was super excited. I have to go pick up my rental car and then we're going straight to 7 Eleven to get some food. I'm starving. I'm so hungry. Let's go get the car. After 15 minutes in line, I finally got my car. I got an SUV. Let's go in. Oh. All right, so buckle up. Let's hit the road. 7 Eleven is calling. And I'm really, really hungry. So the best way to get around anywhere you go in the world is by using Waze app. So I put it in 7-Eleven, there was like three different options here. So I'm going to the closest one to my hotel. My hotel is like two miles away. This is like 2.4, so I'm going a little out of the way to get there, but it's fine. I need my dinner, I need to try some Spam Masubi. I'm so excited, I'm so hungry. I really haven't eaten in like five or six hours, so I can't wait. Yeah, it's really dark, unfortunately. Super dark right now. Uh, you know, I got here and the sun just set the second we landed. And yeah, guys, we're gonna be there in six minutes. Woo, can't wait. I haven't been this excited to eat Spam in a long time. But you know what? You're in Hawaii, you gotta try Spam. Seven Eleven. let's see what they got. So it's basically the end of the day, and they only have one Spam Masubi, so I'm gonna buy just two US dollars. I'm also gonna get a Jumbo Mochiko Chicken Masubi, and I'm gonna get a, what is this? Shuyu Tuna Sushi Roll. So I'm gonna get these three, I'm gonna see if they have anything else. How much you got? And these are the, these are the manapaos, right? right? Manapaos. Manapaos, but they're not good at this time of day? Uh, um, well, we're out of most of it. You out of most of it? This is just the chicken curry and the char? No, it's just this chicken should curry. Be the, yeah, it should be the... Yeah, all we got is curry, the... Okay. 1592. 1592, okay. <laughs> So they didn't have a poke bowl, but they had some other poke like thing. 
and then the buns they're a little old that you know they were saying because it's already like late you know you shouldn't buy it this time maybe in the morning when they're fresh so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go to my hotel and there we're gonna try it oh i need my keys so a lot of you guys may be thinking why did i go to 7-eleven get dinner well the 7-eleven here in hawaii is very different from the 7-eleven on the mainland in the united states there's 40 different locations on these islands and they're very similar to like japan and south korea in terms of the type of quality of their food you know if you're going for anything rice based like sushi you know unigiris musubi poke they got delicious varieties here obviously it was late so they didn't have that much selection they were out of all of the, the spam musubis i mean they only had one left from the cold they also have they also had one from the hot section but it was like a sausage one so i got that as well at 7-elevens in japan and south korea i mean i really really enjoyed it whenever i got really hungry and i didn't have you know, time to stop for some food. I'd just get an unigiri or something quick, like a hand roll, and just eat it and go. Yeah, guys, we're uh, we're four minutes from the hotel. It's super dark right now. Hilo is, uh, it's a quiet town, but it's nice. I mean, obviously I can't see that much. I mean, it's really, really dark right now. Just can't wait to get to my hotel and start eating. I'm so, so, so hungry. I mean, uh, I'm craving the food right now. We finally arrived to the Grand Nailoa Resort by Doubletree Hotel. I am so happy we are here. It's time to eat. It's what we've all been waiting for. Spam Musabai. All right, so we have six things. We have the Spam Musubi, Musabai. We have the hot sausage wieners Musabai. We have salmon wakame musabai. What else we got? Jumbo muchiko chicken musabai. What is this? Spicy tuna cucumber sushi roll. And right here we have the spicy ahi inari. So this is the poke right here. Oh my God, I feel like I might just jump on this first, but you know what? We gotta jump on the one that we haven't tried ever. Spam musabai. Wow. Contains soy and wheat. This is the one I'm most excited for. So how do you open this? It's usually instructions, but this one has no instructions. So you just open it right here. Like that, okay. Take it out slowly. Just like that. Wow, look at this. Spam. The spam is basically like canned pork. It's pretty good. Nice and salty, nice clumpy rice, like a lot of rice. Mmm, it's different. I usually have you know, seafood on my sushi. This is really unique. If you guys don't know why this happened, like why people like spam here, because during World War II, you know, this was a war zone, and there was like no food coming in. So people started stocking up on food they can like preserve, and that was spam. So families, they lived off spam for like weeks and weeks and weeks. So eventually, you know, once war was gone, it became part of their culture. You know, Hawaiians love spam. They actually eat 7 million cans of spam per year. And it's only like 1.4 million Hawaiianese, right? I actually like the textures here. If you ever have canned food, I, I almost never have canned food. If I eat canned food, it's like tuna or sardines. Basically, spam sushi. And it's really, really big. Two of these and you're full. I think Spam's an acquired taste. You have to really like eat it a lot to really like enjoy it, right? For me, it's good, but I know I'm gonna like to go with it way more. Pretty good. Next up, we're gonna try the spicy ahi nari. It says poke, right? Oh, wow. It smells amazing. That spicy sauce. So I'm guessing this is like, okay, so this is like tofu, right? Tofu with rice and tuna. Poke. This is gonna make my day. Mmm. Oh wow. Spicy mayo, super fresh. Tuna, wow. I hate saying this, but this destroys the, the spam musubi. 
And I'm using my hand because I have no utensils. They didn't give me chopsticks. But look at this. Look how good this is. Mmm, spicy. A little creamy. It's actually a little spicy. Like, way more than usual. I personally like the tofu more than the seaweed. But, you know, some people like the seaweed. I like tofu. Mmm, sweet. It's a nice sweet taste. All right, guys, I don't think I'm gonna be able to eat everything. We're gonna try the sausage next. Sausage musubi. So sausage sushi. Let's try it. That's weird, but good. Pretty delicious. Mmm. Instead of having a sausage and um, you have a rice and seaweed and some stuff in the middle. So they put like some type of sauce in there. I don't think it's soy, it's something else. It's like more like a like a vegetable type of sauce. It's a mix of herbs, sauce. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the sausage itself. I mean, I mean sausage from 7-Eleven, you know, so. I think for me, it's gonna be the next one. So next we have the hand roll, my favorite. There we go. So shows you how to do right here. Tear open like that, then you roll this on top. That don't break. You don't want to break it because you want to break the seaweed, right? It's the best part. And it just sticks like that. You just roll it. Oh, it's great. This is my favorite. Spicy tuna cucumber sushi roll. Mmm. It's good. A lot of mayo in here. Mmm. So, it's spicy tuna. But this tuna, not my favorite tuna. This is not like poke. This is more like canned tuna. I'm gonna have to hold off on that. <laughs> this is not my favorite food, guys. I'm just like, I'm doing it for you guys. I know we have to try some 7-Eleven food, but for sure the poke was the best thing. Next up we have this one, which is the monster Jumbo Monchico Chicken Musabai. It's like a double. What is this? Look at this, this is freaking huge. Oh my God, what a monster. So it's basically a chicken sandwich. And instead of having bread, you have rice and seaweed. Look at that. It's definitely not fried chicken. It's like boiled chicken, right? But it has like a teriyaki glaze on it. Mmm. A little sweet. So inside you have this nice creamy sauce right there. So much rice though. So much. This is basically your Hawaiian sandwich. Mm hmm We start off with this. This is so massive. The chicken is good. It's really good. And next up, we have one left. And this is like unigiri. Basically the same thing. Just open here. This is called a salmon wakame. So, basically, salmon, seaweed, unigiri. So it's already wrapped. So it's not the same as the unigiri. Unigiri, it does, it has like instruction on how to do it, which I messed up on multiple times. Mmm. This is fresh. Mmm. This is the tastiest one for sure. So you have bits and pieces of salmon throughout. You have some seaweed throughout as well. And you have the seaweed layer on top. Lots of rice. As you can see, everything has rice. That's so good, so fresh. See bits and pieces of salmon there. Seaweed. Put it around. Oh, it's good. So I'll be honest. Not my favorite food. Obviously, guys. The 7 Eleven food, not the best in the world, like in terms of where you go out and eat. But if you want to get something quick and on the go, stuff you go to 7 Eleven, when you go to South Korea, Hawaii, Japan, these three nations. They have some of the best 7-Eleven food like this, like sushi and like, you know, Japanese, Hawaiian, Polynesian flair to it, right? Really good. I mean, for sure, my favorite was the chicken one. Just massive, huge, 
that one and the poke the poke was really good too because I like the tofu but yeah I mean this is what you can get and it cost me what it cost me I think it was like 15 US dollars 15 90 something which is it's a you know that's what you're gonna spend for lunch or dinner anywhere in America for sure or yourself if you're gonna eat something healthy somewhat healthy you know this is healthy if I went and got like you know something fried nasty it wouldn't have been so good this is like you know particularly healthy everything was good fresh the fish comes from here the rice comes from my obviously from asia right there and yeah guys i mean today was an awesome day super long 17 hour travel day to get here to hilo but all worth it today is the beginning of my trip here in hawaii super happy i'm here I have eight more days to go today i'm super excited because i'm going to take you on a food slash activity tour we're starting off right here at text drive-in for breakfast we're going to eat the world famous malasas malasas are basically portuguese pastries but they've evolved here in hawaii then after this we're going north we're on a zip lining tour it's like a two and a half hour zip lining tour through the mountains it's going to be incredible then after that we're going to go to miriam's big island for lunch then we're going to have some seafood some poke i am so excited let's go inside and let's eat some malasas Let's do it. guys so this is breakfast at text drive-in i got three things i have three malasadas i have french toast which is basically leftover malasada from the night before which then the next day they use it they put it on the grill and they make french toast and over here we have an egg muffin which is basically malasada with no sugar they stuff it with egg cheese and bacon now what is text drive-in text drive-in dates back to 1969 and it's a popular pit stop on the Humakoa coast, which is basically the road driving from Hilo north. So from Hilo, it took me about an hour to get here. And they're famous for their malasadas, which are Portuguese pastries, a lot like donuts, except the traditional Portuguese versions don't contain holes or fillings. But here in Hawaii, they fill it with custard, huaipa, which is like coconut, guava, chocolate, and other fillings. Malasadas arrived in Hawaii in the 19th century when Portuguese laborers from Madeira and the Azores came to work on the sugarcane plantations here in the islands. Text Drive-In is a beautiful Vietnam. So besides this, they have a lot of other things. They have sandwiches, they have local moco, they have a few different dining areas. So I'm sitting indoors. They also have another side over there where another is indoor seating and they have a terrace. So what I want to do first is I'm probably going to try one of these, right? Got to try the mango. Wow. Oh my God. Look at this. Malasa with mango. Let's do this. Oh my God. Super fluffy donut covered in sugar, and like tons of sugar inside. As you can see the mango just like burst out. Look at that. Mmm. I love the amount of sugar there is. So one side you have the filling, the other side is still very fluffy. This is extremely funny, guys. Now I would say do maybe one or two of these and something else you're not gonna get so full i'm a huge fan of mango so i'll go with that first i'm thinking what i'm gonna do next i'm gonna try let's try the egg muffin egg muffin open it up to egg bacon cheese 
basically if they've they've learned to like use my sauce for every different type of dish here right well these are the three like most famous ones you're saying love it good contrast between the super fluffy dough the egg and the bacon no no sugar i i put actually sugar on it from grabbing the other one so there is sugar on it this time but you know usually there's no sugar i don't suggest putting sugar i mean it makes it super sweet but it's good i'm a big fan of egg sandwiches i eat egg sandwiches all day if you really want to go a little nuts you just add some of this right like right, that Mmm, the syrup, maple syrup, all day. Lots of dough here, as you can see. So next up, we have to try this. I mean, this looks so good. I haven't had French toast in a long time. Just gonna put some syrup there. This is so good. So cut it up, fluffy French toast. Get lots of syrup. That is some good French toast. So obviously this is gonna be like a more luxe french toast in terms of like what they're using right because they're not using regular bread like white bread they're using malasa so it does have a little bit of sugar beforehand then they put on the grill then they put extra sugar on top mm. oh syrup oh wow so good so sweet it's a lot it's a it's a, it's a lot of dough but it's really good Mm. What I would suggest is coming with your family. You know, get like a like five or six massages. Get the French toast to share. And get one egg sandwich. Just cut it up. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. You know what? Let me try another one. I'm going to try the coconut. Pretty sure it's coconut right here. Oh, the coconut's the best. Oh, my God. It's a like creamy coconut. Oh, the layers here, the layers, the fluffiness, the sweetness, the sugar. Look at that. And they filled it like all the way to the bottom. I've had manasadas before in Portugal, but never like this, never filled with this cream. And the size too, the size is really big, right? So, I mean, it's like a, I think you can eat like two of these. Eat more than that, you'll be extremely full. That is incredible. I'm gonna try more massage on this trip. When I heard, this is like the best ones on this island especially. What they were telling me here about the egg sandwich is that people come, you know, they buy it and they take it to go. That's why it's one of the most popular items. You start with the bacon. Mmm, heaven, wow. What a great spot. If you're ever driving from Hilo North, stop here for breakfast. They open at 6 a.m. And I got here at 6.30. Mmm, this is so delicious, the white pot. Wow, coconut cream the best wow i got here in the dark and now sun's out beautiful day got an hour drive Woo, really really full but i feel great my sides were delicious so creamy guys the coconut one coconut ones i control i control an egg sandwich oh a must try so yeah we have an hour drive north going zip lining let's go yes this is hawaii finally i can see it you know i got here yesterday and it was super dark this morning it was extremely dark as well on the way up to, to text drive-in and now you really see hawaii super green very lush beautiful landscape and you know the thing about this island is this island has active volcanoes so over here to the left you see over there it looks like a mountain but it's actually not that is a volcano over here we have like some hills semi mountains i mean for me that's a mountain but for most people that's a hill and yeah right now we're in a little bit of traffic there's uh, houses, there's one main road. I'm on this highway here. I'm looking on ways. Let me see, because we're stuck here in traffic. Let me just see how it looks. So this is called the Mahamaloa Highway, and we're going north. So if you're driving up here from Hilo, it takes two hours. From text driving, it takes one hour exactly. And yeah, beautiful day. I can't wait to go zip lining. I'm really, really in awe with this place though. Hawaii is gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, it, it really resembles right now with the hills and like super tight roads, like places I've been to, um, like in Ireland, also in England, um, you know, some places also in Serbia where it's like super green, nice narrow roads, and yeah, just like small villages and towns here and there. 
The major two like towns here are Hilo and Kona. So those are the two like main spots. That's where I'm gonna be basing myself out of for the next four days. Of both of them, two nights and two nights. So let's continue. We have about a 40 minute drive to go until we get to the zip lining. Super excited, just enjoying the air. If you lower the air, just enjoying the scenery. If you lower your window, you get this beautiful cold air. Oh man. And lots of trucks, lots of traffic. I don't know what happened up here. So much traffic. So after 45 minutes, we finally made it here to the tip of the island, the tip of the island of Hawaii, the very northern area. And we actually had to go uphill. So we're going up like a mountain area. Over here to the right, we have a reserve. From what I saw on the maps, we have a reserve over here. It's beautiful green, you know, rocky. We're going through this area with lots of trees. So between the street on this road, there is trees. And over here to the left, we have the Pacific Ocean, so we have the coastline. And it really reminds me of like the Faroe Islands. That's like the most similar I can like tell you in terms of cliffs, green. And over there was lots of like farmland, we've got sheep running around, it's just an epic spot. It got really, really cold too. I had to up the windows because I must be like 40 outside. They got I brought a sweater, so definitely bring a sweater when you come up here to go zip lining. And yeah, we're a little late. We're supposed to be at 8.30 to 8.35 and we still have 10 minutes to go. But we'll get there right now. <laughs> We're a little late, it's 8.45, but we made it here to Kohola zip line. So let's go meet up with our team and see where we're going. Ezra. What's up? So you're our guide today? Yes, sir. Awesome, man. So where are we? Right now, we are located right here, up in North Kohala. You guys are staying all the way over here in Hilo. <laughs> How was that drive this morning? It was long, two hours, man. I don't like that drive. I barely go there, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing today? Uh, today we're going to be doing a full canopy adventure zip line course, guys. Uh, it's going to be 13 tree platforms, nine zip lines, five suspension bridges we're going to cross over today, and one repel station at the very end. All right, man, I'm ready. What's up, guys? Okay, right leg in the red loop, left leg in the black one. Bang. In there. You got to throw these over the shoulders. Pull out there, okay. Oh. Miami. Yeah. So, beautiful day in Hawaii, Nate. You chose the best day to zip line today. Morning, what, what, what language are you speaking, by the way? Huh? What language? Language. Yeah. <laughs> Broken English. Call it pigeon. Yeah. Pigeon. Yeah. All right, guys. We're ready to go. Yeah. Let's do it. Twenty minute drive. Let's do it. I love this car. <laughs> all right. All right. The crew. Yeah. Can't forget about Dre. No. <laughs> oh, guys. <laughs> yes, sir. That's good, Uncle. Good, good. So, guys, what we're about to enter right now is a 600 acre organic macadamia nut orchard. This is actually the largest privately owned orchard on the island. Pretty so, nice. all 600 acres, one man. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> We're actually climbing up to an extinct volcano. You said there's five volcanoes on this island. Five major volcanoes that made up this island. This is Kohala that we're on. Okay. There's Mauna Kea, there's Mauna Loa, Kilauea, and Huala Lai. So one active, three dormant, one extinct. Extinct, we're on it. Thank God. Really? Hey, how you doing? Thank you. Perfect. First thing you gotta do, gloves on. Get some glove action. Get some glove love. <laughs> <laughs> glove love. Glove. All right. All right, David. Let's do this. Let's bake a zip line cake. Perfect. So we're on a hanging bridge right now, and we're gonna have a little, little lesson here. It's called flight school. We're gonna teach us how to go on the zip line. Great. That's the main one. Pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> you guys just chill out, man. We're working. Here, Dave, you can head back here, bud. Yeah. Do some shots in the forest if you'd like. So when it is your turn, please grab that cable and step all the way to the top step. Make sure you're on the other side of the cable so I can get you clicked in. Please do the same thing for Ezra when you're on his platform. Top step, and on the other side so you can get you guys unclicked. After this, I'm gonna tell you to step forward and have a seat right oh, into yeah. your harness, okay? Oh. Keep your feet on the platform, because if not, you're gonna go, but you're still clipped in. You're not gonna make it too <laughs> far. It's gonna be uh, very entertaining for us, so please keep yourself right there. After that, you're gonna rest your hands on the handlebars. We don't have any budget cuts, but if you take a look down at your trolley <laughs> systems, let's do this. All right, so get up here. Yes, sir. Both feet right up top. You can grab the cable if you need help. Okay. Cable is stable. Cook you up. Get you what you need. Okay, my man. Show me where you're gonna break. Oh, break. That's the break. And that parking brake. Show is... me that parking brake. 
It's a fucking break. Boom. And Perfect. that, and then turn around, right? Yep. We'll be almost ready to go. So I have to grab onto these, right? One hand at least. One hand at least. Okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. Okay, great. All right. Almost ready. Ready? You're good to go, my man. Gee. Woo! So then. Dude, you're a zipline assassin, bro. Killing it. Yeah, that is good. All right, well, now you're going to step good? on the outside of the two cables. So you want to go down and up. Sorry, I see it. Perfect. Ooh. Ooh. Kelsey, show me where you're going to slow down. And then parking brake. Perfect. Easy. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yeah, Sorry, boy. You're good. Awesome, man. Oh, yeah. That was easy, you know? Easy. Yeah, easy. Bring it down. That was only like 10, 15 seconds. Not so bad. Yeah. Watch this one. You'll be on the line for about 27, 27 seconds. 27 seconds? Yeah, it's our cool. last one, 1,150 feet. Wow. There, what happened, Alex? All right. <laughs> <laughs> keep coming, keep coming. Let go. Let go. Let go. Okay. I got you. There you go. They're not, they're not, you know. He has a back of the yeah, yeah. Alright, so this is the first real zip. The other ones are just like practice runs. Boom. Ready, set, go. Woo. Woo! Yeah, boy. That's wow. Good. Money. Wow. That's good, right? You have done this before. <laughs> After this zip, though, we are going to do three bridges. We're going to mix it up for a little bit, change it up. The corridor is much more open up. They're mind blowing. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> 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 you smell that like hint of bacon kind of crisping in the air. Oh. No one's cooking bacon. It's your mind being blown from your experience. Yeah, it's okay. okay. <laughs> I like bacon. Love bacon. So did those little black pigs we saw. That's right, <laughs> bacon bites. Yeah, they <laughs> Pork sliders. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Woo! It's amazing. Look at this. Beautiful forest. Oh. Yeah. Perfect. Other side. Other side. Yes, sir. There you uh. go. I like that one a lot. That was cool. That was nice, yeah. Come on down this way for me. That way? Okay. Put your GoPro off. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I'm not ready for that. That was great. But they get longer and longer, right? Longer and longer, I swear. All right, so it's time to cross this bridge. As you can see, Woo! big spaces. No, not that bad. Not that bad. And you're only 70 feet up, so not too 70 bad. feet up. The main thing is to always keep moving. Woo! Oh my god. Is there big holes, man? Not so bad. Oh, yeah. Woo. hey, they're rocking this thing. <laughs> it's pretty tough, actually. Yeah. All right. It's your turn, Dave. How you doing? Good, man. Roger that. <laughs> Hope your heart is pumping. Hope your adrenaline is kicking in. Living your best life. <laughs> Boom. Woo! Woo! Do the thing. Sorry, sorry. Am I? She's fine. She's fine. <laughs> yeah.
So we've made it here to the halfway mark. So we did five zips, four different bridges, and now we have to walk up these steps all the way here to like a little resting area. Got some water, some snacks. Now we still have four more zips to go. And these are like more extreme zips, a lot longer. We have one bridge and then we're also gonna repel. So we're gonna go down backwards, like, you know, basically being like connected to a rope, right? So here we go. Let's do it. All right, ready to zip? Ready. You are good to go, my man. Yes, sir. Okay. Ching. Ching, ching. Woo! Woo! I don't know. Like... Oh, oh, man. Too much motion, bro. All right, I got it. This so scared you. The planks are much easier for you guys. Uh, just have to walk in the center, hands on the sides. Uh, Dave, you're right behind me, bud. Come on when you're ready. Yeah. Nice. This one's so easy. Look at that, all the trees. So so much lush, right? You actually get a pretty good happy medium amount of rainfall. Um, okay. Hilo side, you guys are, when you guys are over in Hilo, you guys are actually on the wettest city of the nation on that side. Wow. Uh, they get upwards of 180 inches of rainfall, uh, 200 on its max. Uh, up here in Kuala, we get 60 to 80, sometimes 100 inches of annual rainfall. Wow. This one's fast? Short and fast. Short and fast. 280 feet. Let's do it. Are ready? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I made it. Yeah. Try it. Nice done, Dave. <laughs> Way to pee. I tell you, I love zip lining and it's so safe. That's my favorite part about it. It's adrenaline, but it's safe. That's right. Everything it's else is not. chaos. <laughs> <laughs> How many feet? 730 feet long. You're coming in so fast, your face is gonna melt right off of its skull. What's this guy talking about? <laughs> Should have read the fine print. What? <laughs> the face melter, yeah. I want to make it, I want to make it. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Get there. I made it, I made it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last one, how long last is it? Last one, 1,150 feet of epicness. You're going to be flying on this one for sure. <laughs> Wow, that soaked. <laughs> oh, that was great, but lots of water. <laughs> you gotta make it. Come on, Andy. Wow. All right, so this is repelling. So basically, just going down slowly, pulling the rope. Not so bad. I've done way scarier than this. You got it, you got it. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, like, like, go, go, go. <laughs> right hand with your left. Okay. Have a seat. Rotate the opposite way. Lean to the face of me. There we go. Stay tight, and then when you're ready, keep your feet there until your head's below. Loosen the grip in both hands at the same time. There we go. Perfect. Uh, awesome. That's it. We did it, right? No more? Survived it. Right on another place? We took out the ride down. The ride down? The Hill down. Yeah, it's Ain't a little no muddy this, right now. We got this crazy driver, so <laughs> get a buckle up on the way down. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> awesome. Accidents are real. Ready to go. How are you doing? <laughs> Hogan Hill? <laughs> Why is it Hogan Hill? <laughs> yeah, that's harder because you're on the pavement. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> thank you, thank you. We're done. Okay, guys, under your left ear is the button, you can push it and it will turn off.
Okay, right here. Oh, I already did it. <laughs> wow. My man, man. thank All you right. so much. Thank you. Until next time. Dre Mix. Hi, bro. All around. Dave, take thank care, you. Nice to meet thank you, buddy. You. Along. That's it, guys. Zip lining is over. What an incredible experience. It's so crazy how the weather changes so fast here. It was like beautiful, sunny, cold. Then it became rainy up there. And now it's hot and sunny again. And what we're doing now is we're driving 30 minutes back down, back down the mountain to a restaurant called, I think it's Merrill's Big Island. Quick 30 minute drive. And here we are in Miriam's. Miriam's restaurant. Can't wait. Seafood, poke. Oh, it's going to be delicious. So this is Miriam's. This restaurant dates back to 1988 and they specialize in seafood but they also have lamb and beef. And most of their menu, like 90% of the menu, is farm to table. So all the seafood came from the sea here, all the lamb, the beef was like raised here and all the vegetables come from the islands. Amazing, I can't wait to eat, let's go. When you come to Hawaii, you have the poke, ahi, tuna, delicious, look at this. So we got ahi tuna, we have sweet potato chips, onions, green, green onions or scallions, and then over here we have some guacamole, it looks amazing, oh I can't wait. This is why I am so excited to be in Hawaii, I'm gonna eat lots and lots of poke. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get some of that, Oh, it's just like that. Should probably put on the chip. I'm gonna go straight like this first. This is amazing. Mm. But the way you gotta do this is get some of this on top. Put the ahe on top too. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I love the sweet potato chip. Mm. It's literally like butter, this is high tuna. This is too good. And the seaweed's a little different too. Now I'm just gonna add everything on top. You know, big, big red bite right there. I personally just eat non stop. Uh, tuna poke. When you come to Hawaii, you gotta eat their poke. Their poke is like the number one in the world. Big bite. Next up, we're trying their short ribs. They've had this on the menu for 30 years. So you have the short rib right here, right? You have pineapple relish, more scallions on top. You have bok choy. You have, what is this, kimchi right here brown jasmine rice, and then this is like a peanut Chinese dressing, a little spicy. I'm gonna cut this in half. Wow, look at this. Look at that. Look how rare it is. Oh man, that is so good. Let's just cut this there. Man, you can see the juices flowing. Oh my god. It was like the softest, most tender thing ever. It fell apart like butter. Mmm. I love the pineapple with radish. Oh, so good. So good, guys. Holy smokes. And I'm gonna put some some of this uh Chinese sauce on top. Spicy right there. Just a little bit. Good enough. Cut this guy in half. Mm. Oh, my favorite thing from Korea. Mm hmm. Mm. Fermented cabbage all day. So get some of that. Mix it here. Oh, that short ribs. Phenomenal. Mm. So you have the spiciness of the peanut sauce, the crunchiness of the bok choy, buttery, buttery short rib. Mm. How you doing, brother? Phenomenal, man. Right. Phenomenal. Well, the last plate of the day. Got some kawaii prawns. So these are big prawns. Got cucumbers, some cabbage, nice sauce on the side, and obviously jasmine rice. It's almost like creamy prawns. Wow. So good. A little, a little burnt too, a little crust on it. I'll just mix it up with everything here. Oh yeah, quite wrong.
on the island of Kauai. So lots of veg on there. Wow, great combination. Oh, this is good. I cannot get enough of these prawns. One thing I highly suggest is eating a lot of seafood when you come over here to Hawaii. Lots of seafood. For me, I would eat seafood all day if I could. And that's it guys, we had such an incredible day. We started off super bright and early, 6.30 in the morning at Tex Drive-In Malasadas. We had three of them, the French Toast Malasada, we had the Egg Biscuit Malasada. I mean, my God, that was like a Malasada overload, but they say there's some of the best in all of Hawaii and the best here on the big island. After that, I went up to go zip lining, incredible experience, nine different lines. I mean, the bridges, just a phenomenal experience. And I love going zip lining because it's super safe and it's adrenaline rush. Awesome, awesome experience. And then we came here to Miriam's, had some delicious ahi poke, ahi tuna poke. Wow, mouthwatering, so fresh. Man, the short rib, I can't tell you how good that short rib was. I mean, just fell apart my mouth and the prawns. And I highly suggest you do all this. It's north of Hilo. You gotta drive about two hours north to get here. This area is the northern part of the big island. And yeah, so when you come to Hawaii, come to the big island and visit everything I did today. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from Hanakoa, the big island of Hawaii. Today, I'm super excited because I'm here at a chocolate farm. I'm at the Hanakoa Chocolate Farm. Here, they have like four acres of land. They grow a lot of different things here besides chocolate. They also grow like pineapples and different fruits and vegetables. We're gonna see how they make chocolate. We're gonna try some chocolate. And then after this, we're gonna drive back to the town of Hilo, and then we're going to Nori's for dinner to try some seafood. Well, the common name is white pineapple, could be a cone of sugar loaf and there's a few other names for it but essentially it's a very light colored pineapple with white flesh low acidity and um, uh, and of course the core is not very fibrous so you can eat the whole thing so it's a very once you've had a white pineapple you'll never have a yellow again I mean I've never seen this before tiny no or oh, it gets a lot bigger oh yeah it'll get much bigger it'll okay, get up okay. to about five pounds so wow. these will be ready to harvest right about late July early August time frame yeah, so these two crops give us a kind of a steady monthly income. Cacao is the mother of chocolate, the mother plant of, of chocolate. We've got about 550 trees spread through the entire property here. This is our largest orchard up here in front. All of these were planted from seed and they were planted from cross-pollinated seeds. So there's about seven or eight different varieties out here. There's a ton of, of different varieties. And if you look, there's all different shapes and sizes. The oldest plants out here are just about two and a half years, which is just about when they start to produce. So Mike, tell me how many different uh, chocolates do you make? I make nine different chocolates. Two of them are from Hawaii. I make an 85% and 70% Hawaiian. And then just to name a few of the others, we've got everything from Fiji, Dominican Republic, um, Honduras, Madagascar, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Vietnam. Perfect, so the two that you make from Hawaii, you have an 85 and a 70? Yes, yes, exactly. And those are 70% 70, uh, 70 cacao, so like, so it's gonna be less sweet, more The 85 more is the, the least sweet of all of them, yeah. and then everything else is That's gonna be favorite. 70%. That's actually like 90. Like. <laughs> wait till wait till, wait till you try our 85, and even the 70s. I think you're gonna like the 70s. I wanna point out the original house. That's the bottom floor of our house. And that was built in 1920. And then uh, the main house, the top floor, was built in 1953. And the doctor, the first owner, brought two plantation homes up from town here, Honokaha town. And he sandwiched them together. So this really odd seam down the middle of the house. So this is vanilla orchid. It's the only fruiting orchid. And uh, each one of these uh, will produce uh, several flowers on it that come just once a year pollination here in Hawaii we have to do it manually because we don't have any native pollinators that's not a big deal but the fact that it comes once a year and the flower only lasts four hours is is a um, uh, fairly stressful you got to make sure you're there when the luckily you don't live off this no 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 we, yeah exactly <laughs> no. we don't live off this so, good so you're using this to go on top of your cacao so you yeah, can so like fight right, the beetle right, right in the yorkette where the branches start to come off 
we'll, we'll lay a, a, a cutting of vanilla over and then it'll take over the that Yorkette area and hang right off of the plant. Well, we've got over 40 varieties of tropical fruit trees and avocados here on the farm. So this is cacao tea. It's made from the outside parchment skin of the roasted cacao beans. So we, uh, we brew that, a, a, put a tablespoon in boiling water and steep it for 10 minutes. And you've got this beautiful, delectable tea. Okay, there we have it. Let me see. You need to have about 100 pounds of wet bean to really get an effective fermentation going. Does so, it taste like so chocolate? You've got, or can it just taste like yeah, so you've got your parchment here and these little nuggets of... <laughs> okay, so the first one we're trying is 85% well, cacao from Hilo. Words because mm -hmm. some chocolate, like if you get a bad chocolate, you, you will get those flavors. Okay. Mm. Like a moldy chocolate. Moldy. Who's saying uh, yeah. berries, nutty. No, you don't. You should let it sit there. Yeah, you're like, you know, taste. Your taste buds absorb it. Mm. Oh wow, that's phenomenal. Well, and also the tea, well. some of the best tea ever. Sort of start picking apart what the, what happened in the process. It tastes like pure cacao. So number two is the same as number one, just the difference is 15% less cacao. So 30% sugar. Exactly. Bright fruits, mm -hmm. yeah. Banana, right, you said? I said, yeah, banana. And of course, I'm only giving it three oh. of the multiple flavors that are good. in this chocolate. I like the first one better though. It's in common. And uh, the exit is my eye, and let's just say it's a 70% lint. So I take that, right? That's right at where your tongue is, just starts to be sensitive. So you can... How much percentage on this one? 70. 70? And it's from Fiji. And from Fiji, yes. Yeah. Flavor-wise. Yeah, but she's right. Like, it's waxy. It's lots of fruit. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah a little more creamy on this one, right? Yeah. So this yeah. is on the... 70% yeah, from the like DR. <laughs> so, yeah. So flavor-wise, well, let's see, mouthfeel-wise, this is probably the least creamy of everything that we've tasted so far. It's on the sort of, I'd call it the left side mm. of the spectrum. Low creaminess. Um, nice and smooth. Smooth. Uh, for me, it starts out with a little subtle mint flavor and then switches right to blueberry. Mm. It might be different for you guys. I think it hits you at the end, the blueberry. Yeah. 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 Blueberry. Yeah. Blueberry. Yeah. Yeah. Blueberry. Yeah. So number five is from Honduras mm -hmm. and it's the peanut butter cup. Yep. Let's no, see. no more bright fruits, yeah. but so does so everybody get a, a really strong peanut flavor? Mm hmm. Okay. Well, here's something I just learned about oh, this wow. farm and it's, it's the location. Best. It's the best one. It's an interesting this flavor, from Peru. much darker than those first four. Um, I feel like it has some raisin, but I don't know if it's raisin. Okay. Mm. Mm. Wait, when you well, who are you so we nicknamed, <laughs> we nicknamed this one the S'morm because like graham cracker really and marshmallow. Sacred. I taste marshmallow. I don't really taste the graham cracker, but. Yeah. Mm. I think nah. I initially. Ecuador. Of, uh, butter is mm -hmm. very high. Oh, well. It was like a fudge brownie. Yeah. Mm. Can I have a little more? <laughs> <laughs> Madagascar. Flavor wise, uh, acidic citrus up front. For me, it's like a mm -hmm. tangerine. Mm -hmm. Right? No. And then I'm. Um, tangerine. 12 seconds in, I get a little hint of coffee in there. Okay. And then by the end, the end for me on this one's a little more astringent, a little more drying flavor, so I call it earthy, a little less nutty. I feel like it was the most most earthy of them all. Yeah. Right. I think so. Number nine, Vietnam. So crazy. I taste so. mm -hmm. And um, yes, exactly. So this one, the mm -hmm. nickname for. Oh, I love it. So here's an example of nice how raisins. palates are different. So my palate mm. took seconds well. to start to really activate and get the flavors. Some people get it right oh, off. So good. That was good. Real vanilla extract yeah. and very easy to make. Get yourself a bean. You can buy them from Amazon. When you get the bean, put a slit lengthwise in it, put it in a bottle about this size and fill it with a high proof, high purity alcohol. Uh, this is actually the really cheap vodka, the black label bottom shelf stuff. And then stick it in the back of your cupboard for about six months and let it age. And after six months, start using it. Every time you use some, fill it back up. So this is basically a lifetime supply, so don't spend $15 on that little bottle of extract anymore. Make your own and take that $15 and invest it someplace else and, you know, make eight or 10% on it and you have a nice nest egg. But all right, so this is all of our, our cacao bean supply. And just in an example, these are uh, beans from Honduras, the Wampa Serpi. Uh, these are fermented and dried. Um, and we've got right now in stock, we've got about 800 pounds of beans. And, uh, and if you do the math, 
If you make a 70% chocolate from this, typically it takes one pound of fermented and dried beans to make one pound of finished chocolate. So potentially there's 800 pounds of finished chocolate on the floor here. So that's like $80,000. Exactly. Something like that. Right? Exactly, yeah. I think I nailed it. But I'm pretty good at math. Yeah, if it, that's optimistic, but um, you know, $80,000. And that's a good indicator of, of, of how what good the industry that you're in, right? It takes a very small amount to make a, a large gross sales. So obviously once you're done trying all the chocolate, you gotta buy some. The 85 cacao is 13.95 for two ounces. The rest of them is 12.95. And then this the tea right here is 8.95. I bought two bars. I bought the cacao 70% and I bought this one, the Honduras. How much for that? This is a pure Hawaiian cacao. Amazing. But we gotta say the Honduras one, oh, phenomenal. We're gonna try some more, right? What are we gonna try? We're gonna try something new. Look at this. Yeah, oh gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what's in here, man? This is crazy. Okay, so this is, um, so this product's called Hui Hui Bark. And Hui Hui in Hawaiian is a, uh, a, it means a mix of all good things. So whenever I finish a batch of chocolate, I, I have some left over. And so I, t I save all that. And then I make this thing called Hui Hui Bark, which is basically whole roasted cacao beans, nibs, sea salt, and then I cover it in the Hui Hui chocolate. So that sounds incredible. And I love it because you see the so cacao now beans we're gonna, in there. Now we're going to try it. All right. So, um, yeah, let's just uh, just break a piece off. Break a piece? Break a piece. Ah, oh, no. oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. You like? Mm. I never had it. Just got the beans, the nibs. A little bit of salt in there. Mm hmm. Yep. I love sea salt with chocolate. Mm. Hawaiian sea salt. Mm. All right, I'm taking it. <laughs> wow, that was some of the best chocolate I've ever had. So good. My favorites were for sure the 70% cacao from Hawaii, so the ones he produces here, and also the Honduras one. Ooh, super delicious. And that last one, the big mix of everything, just phenomenal chocolate. Absolutely a must visit when you come to the big island. And now we're driving one hour south to Hilo to go eat at Nori's. Seafood time. Nori's is like Japanese slash Asian Hawaiian fused. And I think I'm gonna go with some ramen, maybe some spicy ramen ramen. I hear they have some delicious ramen. Let's go inside. Let's eat some dinner. I'm really, really hungry. All right, so I got the spicy ramen. It's their specialty today. And so we have ramen, kimchi, eggs, fish cake. This is shaved chili right here. And we have some pork. So the best thing to do is mix it all up. It's really hard to eat raw. Wow, it's good. Basically, cup noodles right here. Straight up. Not too spicy. So if it's not spicy enough, get some more. Basically, the chili flakes right there. You gotta break this up, right? It's good though. It's a creamy sauce. Mm. Broth is light. Not my favorite spice level. I would actually turn it up a, like a lot. She was saying it's the spicy thing they have on the menu, but I think it's because of the kimchi. Let's grab some of the pork. <laughs> Mm. Oh, delicious pork. Actually, it tastes like pork ribs. Wow. So, the noodles, a lot of noodles here. Again, like I said, like cup noodle soup almost. Very similar, but you have a like creamy broth. Wow, this is good. Really filling. That's the one thing about ramen is that you can't eat too many bowls. Fish cake, pork, mix it all up. Wow, the fish cake's delicious. It's uh, not thin cut, pretty thick. The egg though, and I think, I mean, the chili, this is not that spicy. Like, I would have just thrown like big chilies in here over the chili, like, over like grated chili. 
Oh, the kimchi. Fermented cabbage. More spice, guys. Lots of spice here. Oh man, I'm loving this. Mm. All the chili flakes in here. Look at this. Crazy. Oh, it's so good. Though. Mm. But here in Hawaii, they have amazing ramen. Obviously, a lot of Japanese influence here. Wow. And getting this, like that. Oh, fish cake. At the end, you know, you know all the ramen, all the veg, go in. Mm, the problem is the broth while it's spice. It's really spicy. Mm. This place has a lot of options. I mean, they have moko loco, they have different Chinese dishes, but I suggest the ramen. That's what they're like known for. So guys, we had an amazing afternoon. We learned all about the farm. We saw different fruits. We saw all the cacao plants. I mean, beautiful spot. I mean, he really, you know, here it's all about sustainability. You know, farm to table, everything. And that farm, it just shows you what it takes to do that. I mean, see the four acres, the fruits and the chocolate. We tried chocolate, we tried chocolate tea, cacao tea, so delicious. I mean, the chocolate is incredible. Right now he's only producing two from his farm but he's also producing seven other ones. And the best for me was for sure the 70%, the one from uh, Honduras, and that big block at the end, just incredible. Then we drove an hour down here to Hilo, where I'm staying, and we came here to Nido, so like Japanese name, obviously, but lots of Hawaiian food, lots of Asian food, super delicious ramen, so I highly suggest coming here and having this spice ramen. This is actually a special, but they told me it's here like often, so like every other day, every three days, they have it. And yeah, guys, I hope you love this video, the big island of Hawaii. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here coming at you from Hilo on the island of Hawaii, the big island. Today, I'm very excited because I'm here at Cafe 100, and here, this is the home of the Loco Moco. Loco Moco is a really traditional dish here in Hawaii. Basically, it's gravy, rice, meat, and an egg. That's like the original, right? But here, they have 30 different varieties. I'm trying four of them. And after this, we're driving all the way to Kona on the other side of the island, the second biggest city or the other big city on this island. And there we're gonna go do some activities and then go to Umeke for some seafood lunch. We're gonna try some poke and some other stuff. I'm so excited, I cannot wait. Are you guys ready? Let's go inside and see how they make the loco moco. guys so we saw how they made the local mocos basically rice gravy the egg on top of whatever meat you choose right 30 different varieties I chose the spam the original the ahi tuna and the beef teriyaki I'm so excited I think my favorite is gonna be the beef teriyaki because I just love a teriyaki sauce smells so good oh wow the aroma is coming out original right here so I'm gonna start with the original I'm gonna move out this spam move out the teriyaki and the ahi tuna. Here we go. Original. Mm. 
Well, this looks incredible. As you can see, it's takeaway. So you can just pack it up and go. So first thing you do, obviously pop that yolk, let it go throughout, cut up that patty. Wow, wow. They love the rice here, love it. So you get in here, get what you can. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, delicious. An egg, burger, but no bun. And basically, the sauce is the gravy and the rice. There's a bun, mm. Mm. Oh, I love it, delicious patty. Mm, gravy's so good. Wow. Here's my new jam. Oh my God, look almost delicious. Delicious, guys. Wow. I don't even know what to say. Never tried it, and I love it. Mmm. Whoa. So good. You got the yolk, the egg, the gravy just like unifies everything. There's a jump off. Jump off. Oh my god. And this actually originated in Hilo. So, if you guys didn't know that, Loco Moco came from Hilo. And right here, as you can see, the home of the Loco Moco. Can't tell you how good it is, and I love the rice. Wow, what a great combination. This is incredible. Mm. So the original is amazing. It's really amazing. I'm gonna close it up. I'm taking this home. Next, I'm gonna try Spam, obviously. We're in Hawaii, gotta try Spam. Look at this. Two pieces of Spam, egg, gravy, and rice. Wow. So just cut a piece of Spam, you know, open that yolk, move it around. So I'll get some of this, a little bit of gravy, some Spam, perfect. Mm. Spam's not my favorite. Definitely like the beef patty, way more. Mm. I guess it has to grow on you, right? Get a little more, and this time I'm just gonna get Gravy, rice, and spam. It's good. Obviously, I'd go with the beef. If you're gonna go for spam, go with beef. Let's go to the next one. And I think we need to try the ahi tuna and leave the beef teriyaki last. Cause the beef teriyaki, I'm sure it's gonna be my favorite for sure. All right, just go in here and pop. Boom. It all just drizzle throughout. Ahi tuna. It's like. It's like I tuna steak right here. Wow. Mm. Oh wow. I love it. But I love ahi tuna. Ahi tuna is the best. I think if you'd go raw, like ahi tuna, like like poke, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the same thing, right? You need like something like cooked, something like a little dense, a little hard. It's really good though. Mm hmm So what changes, obviously is just whatever meat you put on top. So if they have 30 different combinations, I guess they have like a big mix of everything, right? But these are their favorites. I guess if you're a pescatarian, or if you love fish, you like this one a lot. You don't have to go crazy with the rice. You can just eat a little bit of rice and the ahi. I think the best one is the next one. So far, by the way, so far, the original is the best for sure. But this is gonna be amazing. Beef teriyaki with a nice egg. Let's pop this. Mix it up. Oh yeah, All right there. Nice beef teriyaki. Wow. So, let me get through here. This one's actually a little harder to get through. Enough, I can get this. So delicious, a little sweet. Super tender beef. Yeah, I like it a lot. Wow, well, yeah. This definitely beats the original. This is a bomb.com. I highly suggest teriyaki. This one is so good, so flavorful. This is like my number one here. And the original is really good too. You know what? Let me open that original up right here. The original of the patty. Basically, like if you like burgers, the local milk is your jam. 
So if you compare them, see, all the gravy here, no gravy here. So maybe I should just grab some of this, put it with the gravy. No. I mean, it's definitely a taste of your rice, right? That teriyaki sauce, you just need that to like overwhelm everything, and the gravy really kills that. So, oh wow. And I thought it was like not so filling. Wow, it's really filling. So I'm just gonna dive in. I'm full. And that's it, guys. Breakfast is over. Wow, really, really filling. Delicious. Oh my god, the loco moco. The loco moco, you have to try it here. When you come to Hilo, come here to Cafe 100, get the original. You won't go wrong with the original. I mean, obviously, if you don't eat meat, then you gotta go with something else, but that is so delicious. The gravy is the best part. All right, guys, we have a two hour drive to Kona. Let's go to Kona. It's the other side of the island. It's a huge island, two hour drive. Let's get it. The drive from Hilo to Kona takes roughly an hour and 45 minutes on the Daniel K Highway. So you cross from east to west of the big island. And right here to the right, we have Mauna Kea. This is a dormant volcano. As you can see, there's snow up there. It's really high. And up here in this area, it's really, really cold as well. And it's incredible to see the difference in seasons, right? So we had rain yesterday, we had sunshine, then we have cold, and now we're getting hotter and hotter and we're going downhill, mountains, Volcanoes, just incredible. This island is huge. Wow, so we made it here to the west side of the island. As you can see, Pacific Ocean. And right over there we have Maui. The island of Maui. First we find Maui. <laughs> As you can see, this is all volcanic rock. If you guys don't know, the big island of Hawaii has five volcanoes, one active, three dormant, one extinct. If you want, you can actually go up to the Volcanoes National Park. We're gonna do that in a few days. And this is it. Beautiful, huge island. Let's continue. Let's go to Kona. I'm not, no. Uh, me either. I haven't done it. That's right not, there. Um, you're driving on a highway, and it's a two lane highway, so if anything happens. All right, yeah. Good. This is it? Yeah. All right, after a two hour drive, we made it here to Kona, beautiful Kona. It's hot, it's gorgeous. You can see Pacific Ocean right there. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on an aquaculture tour to see how you know Hawaii is sustaining itself in terms of water and seafood. A big thing here is they don't wanna pull more you know, fish out of the sea, seafood out of the sea. They wanna farm it. So we're gonna go see a uh, abalone farm and that is basically like a shellfish. So we're gonna learn about it right now and we're gonna go see it. You guys ready? I'm excited, can't wait. My name is Candy Ellsworth. I'm the executive director of Friends of NOHA. We are a small nonprofit at the Natural Energy Laboratory of Hawaii Authority at the Hawaii Ocean Science and Technology Park. And I represent all of the over 50 different tenants here and try to be that um, connection between the public and the visitor or the public and the community uh, with the state agency. And so we're a small nonprofit and we do conservation education and community outreach as it relates to Nelha and the activities going on here and also sustainability. And so we provide a daily tour every day, a little bit of a snapshot for the public to be able to see what goes on here and experience a little bit of it. So Monday through Friday, I do a tour for that have a different focus every day. And then I can also design educational workshops and we have a sustainable STEAM aquaculture workshop for educators um, that is also available as well. And so a lot of what I try to do is um, provide the tours for the public and the paid tours provide for free tours for Hawaii students and educators because I think it's really important for those um, for the children and our educators here in Hawaii to see that these high-tech STEM careers exist here for them on, on their islands and they don't have to leave to find these great careers. And when they get to interact with all the scientists and engineers and biologists, that career becomes accessible to them. They can picture themselves in that role and it looks like fun. So that's really the impact that I'm trying to have here in Hawaii, but also the impact that is also going to be global someday as well. <laughs> We've arrived here to Kampachi Farms and basically what they do here is they test to see which is the best fish to produce commercially. They don't actually produce commercially, so they're just testing. So here they have amber jack, which they're gonna feed for us right now. 
and then as you can see all around here these are all huge tanks but they're all empty so they've you know tested grouper they've tested other fish but some of them are too predatorial you know too aggressive or they can't like produce in you know massive quantities so they're doing the amberjack which is a lot easier and the amberjack doesn't get scared of the food so he throws the food in and they go for it my name is darren i'm here working at Campachi farms we're developing uh, aquaculture technologies for the future uh, to be part of this growing and evolving industry of food production from the ocean uh, we have working with particular Campachi fish um, we're further on going to be working with other species of fish like the nenue uh, which is a um, herbivore fish that lives here in the reef and the work we do with the macroalgae is going to be also part of the department of energy's work to develop uh, the algae for fuel production as well as for food and feed and that's a lot of the technology is evolving changing and we're learning from it as it goes so this this group of fish here are about two to two and a half kilos they're actually first generation of the uh, of the fish that we grow on site and the main reason we're working particularly with them and keep them around is because I would like to learn about their genetics and their performance. So this is some of the fish, the, the feed that we feed. But this is not um, what we'll be feeding for food production. What we will do in the future Whoa. is away for uh, their hair diet. They don't need to eat uh, of fish that already some of our lines that we are actually using to feed the Nenue that we currently have on site uh, this is to actually keep them in a the mono diet of a particular algae to understand how their gut flora will be changing in the future and we're hoping to learn more as we test this mono diet and maybe combinations of different algae um, so that's some of our samples that will go into the tank pretty soon after they get weighed we weigh them in we weigh them out so that was kombachi farms really cool experience and now we're going over to see the abalones abalones big island abalones i can't wait they actually told me i can try one here really exciting i actually love abalones almost like a shellfish very similar let's go explore this is huge check this out the abalone farm is ginormous so many different tanks they're growing roughly three million plus at any given moment and the reason they're here in hawaii is because they need the algae and algae grows where there's a lot of sun so at the very end we have algae right and over here we have the abalones and the difference in the tanks is the sizes so as they grow they move them they move them until they're ready they're mature and ready to sell so abalones don't love sun that's why they have these shades right here all right guys so i'm going to taste the algae Pretty good, almost like seaweed. <laughs> Can I get like a big a chunk? No, I'm joking. <laughs> a little more? Awesome. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. Not so bad. After trying some algae, next up we're gonna try the abalones. You can see them right here. They're like, looks like a mussel slash oyster snail. They stick to everything. They try to stick to your skin, but they really can't. They gotta stick to something like, you know, solid. Uh, they're sticking to the edge of this tank, as you can see. And that's it. That's what abalone looks like. What you see it right there is like tentacles, right? So where you see there like two whiskers, their eye is there. And then the middle piece is like their flesh, right? And if you like look on the side of it, you can see where the sex is. You can see the different sex, right? So that's what he's doing right there. He's moving it, he's seeing the different sex. And yeah, so you just put the abalones on the grill. So once that's ready, we're gonna eat. All right, so this is the abalone. I've tried it before in Japan. It's like a muscle. I think it's a little like harder than a muscle though. Similar. Mm. It's tender, not that much taste, it's very bland. So what I would do with this is probably put like, I don't know, some seaweed or some uh, some wasabi, something to give it some more taste, maybe some heat. And we're also gonna try the guts right here. So these are the guts of the abalone. I like that a lot more. Mm. Nice taste in the middle. It's actually, feels like very creamy. You know, like burst out a little bit. That was delicious. Unfortunately, everybody ate the rest of it, so I can't have any more. We started with some seafood. We're gonna go to Umeke and have some lunch. Super excited. I can't wait to eat some poke. Poke, poke all day. Oh man, my appetite is building. Let's go to Umeke. Mountain and got whatever content. 
So where's Priyanka today? With love? After a five minute drive, we made it here to Umeke's Fish Market. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with three different pokes. If you guys didn't see, there's like five different varieties here. We have Hawaiian Sweet Kanaka. The difference is the sauce, right? This one has teriyaki. This one has, uh, you can see the salt here, as well as what else is in there? I don't know, lots of different things. Iamana. Iamana and Imoko. Sorry. The hard, hard things for me to pronounce. Oh wow. Delicious. The freshness, can't get fresher than this. Mm. It's like nutty, right? Yeah. You're nutty? This one. Mm. So if you guys don't know what limokohu is, that's basically like a seaweed. Wow. Wow. Incredible. I know my love this one though. Teriyaki. Mind blowing. Yeah, man. I love teriyaki, but it's so different here in Hawaii. Mm. You guys really give a lot of a lot of tuna. Big clumps. So this morning you cut 300 pounds of, of tuna. Oh man, this ahi tuna is the best. Hey, thank you. Chicken of the sea. And the personal favorite fish on the planet is tuna. Ahi tuna all day long. So this is called ogo. Looks like seaweed. Mm. So good. Differences, this one's like it's more straight ahi tuna, a little bit of seaweed. This one has some of the nuts, right? And this one, obviously teriyaki. All incredible. I can go to town on all this. Mmm. Pokey. Hoin salt. We got onions and green onions. And then we got the furikake sauce. Furikake seeds. Okay. Before we continue with some more poke, we're gonna have a traditional dish here called Lao Lao. Lao Lao is basically steamed pork that's been wrapped in a taro leaf. And next to it, we have Oyo. Oyo, it's like some greens, right? And then next to this, we have some rice. And look at this. So basically, what they do is they wrap the pork and the pork fat in taro leaf and they steam it for three hours. Open it up. Pork. Oh my god. In. Deliciousness. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, the taro leaf. Taro is very green. It's almost like kale, but the pork like falls apart. It's like steam perfection. Mm. So yeah, the fat, the flesh, the taro leaf. Phenomenal dish. Today everything I'm trying is traditional Hawaiian. Super traditional. And then next to it, I'm gonna get some of the rice. Look at that. So you got the fat of the pork. Just like if you ever had super delicious tender pork ribs, same feeling. Mmm, super light. There's no extra sauce here. This is real. Mm. What I love about the Big Island is that everything is farm to table. Really great. They're really they know how to sustain themselves. One of the best pork I've ever had. And I've had a lot of pork in my life. From Miami. Oh my god. That is so good. Next is the oyo. Oyo. Tasty. Similar density and hardness of um, like celery, but it's tastier. 
Wow. So he's making the three poke we just had from scratch. So we have the teriyaki one and the two other ones. The original one, the Hawaiian one, and then the one with like, you know, it's like a seaweed, algae, it looks amazing. I mean, he just goes in, mixes everything, then mixes with his hands. And what I'm doing is I'm taking two of these home with me for later, and right here, I'm gonna have the teriyaki one. I'm really full from having the sampler and the pork, but I gotta have this, it's too good. Mm. Oh, it's so sweet. Mm. Oh, this one has a little kick to it. Wow. Look at this. Like, I just can't. Can't stop. If you're looking for a sweet poke, go for the teriyaki. The other two are really good too, but this one's just... It's the king. Like I said before, the reason why it tastes different is teriyaki sauce because it's theirs. They make it right here from scratch. Mmm. The sweetie is too good, bro. Too good. Bro. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We had such a great day. We tried local mocos, four different ones over there in Hilo at Cafe 100, the home of the local moco. You have to try the local moco. It's incredible. If you like burgers, you'll love it. Then we drove across the island, two hours from Hilo to Kona, two hour beautiful drive. You see the volcano up there, we cross over and then we made it there to see the sustainability, what Hawaii is doing to stay sustainable. You know, they really are pushing, you know, sustainability. Drink water, not bottled water. Have your own water, fill it up with water. You know, eat fish. Obviously, everybody wants wild caught, but what they're doing here is farming them in the wild, which is so different. Then we came here, and we had some phenomenal food here at Umeke. You know, obviously we had lots of poke, and the lao lao was so, so good. You have to try this when you come to Hawaii. Pork steamed for three hours in a taro leaf. Wow. And then we saw how he made poke. Mm. Wow. I can drink this. This teriyaki sauce is beyond good. If you guys love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you next travel food adventure in the island of Hawaii. Peace. Good afternoon everyone, I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here coming at you from beautiful Kona, the big island of Hawaii. Today I'm super excited because I'm going to the Kona Coffee Estate to try some coffee. We're gonna get a tour of the plantation. We're gonna have some coffee covered in chocolate, white chocolate, milk chocolate. And then after this, we're gonna go over to Kona Brewing to try some beers and eat some food. They're actually the greenest brewery on the planet, super sustainable. Are you guys ready? I'm excited. Let's go. We have all the way almost up to the airport outside. We are looking down on 25 acres of UCC's coffee farm here and enjoying some of our coffees before we go out. So right here we have their state coffee. Ooh, super hot. Mmm, it's good. Nice. You know coffee's good when you don't need sugar and it tastes good. So here we have coffee beans with chocolate. Mm. Mm. I love it. Nice crunch. Mm. White chocolate. My name is Steven. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Kona Coffee Farm. Um, we're here at UCC, Ueshima Coffee Company, and uh, looking down on 25 acres of coffee farm. Uh, this is about uh, two-thirds, maybe, of our farm. Uh, we have 35 acres with 15 to 18,000 trees, um, and it all is served here, right behind you in the store. You were telling me Kona Coffee, most of it's distributed in Japan. Um, you would expect most of it would be distributed out of Japan, but all of the coffee that we have comes here. Um, very small proportion of uh, Kona coffee makes it um, that far away. So we only have 0.01% of the coffee in the world, so it's only a very small portion. On one side of this plantation, we have all these trees cut. Basically, it's like stumps, right? On this side, they're grown. So why is that? 
Sure. Uh, on the right side of the farm here, we just cut these trees back, say, a couple weeks ago. Um, but that's because if we look at the trees on this side, they work as a good example. Um, coffee only grows once in one location on the branch. So we have a lot of blank space on the inside of the tree. As the tree gets older, the coffee moves further out towards the end of the branch. Um, so it starts to lose its flavor. So we trim it back to make sure that the flavor is coming through consistently. And then they grow back into something like this. And this is just one year after what the right side will look like one year later. It will look something like this. And then we'll have great tasting coffee just one year later. So you cut that, one year later you have a tree. Yep. Pick, cut again. Yep. And then we go, we roast, and we drink coffee. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so next up we're gonna roast our own coffee beans. So we gotta fill out a waiver, obviously because, so the roasters are like 400 degrees. Yep, 450. Yep. 450 degrees. And then you can either go regular size, Large, extra large, we're going regular. Get two bags of coffee, right? These two bags, your own picture on it from UCC Corner Coffee. All right, so the process is very easy. Put the funnel in, you pour the coffee beans. And that's basically it. Now we have to wait a little bit, and then we're gonna move it, right? And it's gonna take like roughly 20 minutes total to roast the beans. Woo, it's hot, right here. So we're going to be checking our coffee, looking for different color, different amount of oil, um, several different things along the roasting process here. Uh, but we still have about 15 minutes to go here, so um, we'll see how it goes. And so those are the different types of, uh, I guess, roasting, right? So green beans, regular, light, medium, city, French, full city, high. So different flavors, basically, right? Yeah. We've been roasting for about 10 minutes. As you can see, the color is changing. Pull it out. See it's starting to roast, right? Oh. Okay. So what I'm going for is French. So not Italian. French is like one minute less. You know, so it's really like city to Italian is like darker roast. Anything lighter is light roast. You're going medium, right? Medium? Okay, here's done. <laughs> Around 20 minutes in, as you can see, we're almost there. He keeps pulling it out, blowing the smoke so you can see the color. And once it's ready, once he thinks it's French, we pull it out. So you're very close to grab it with the hand that you don't like. Off right. hand. Off hand. Okay. Grab a hand. Right. Pull through. Okay. Pull it all out. Woo! Give it a little bit of a knock. Perfect. Come back up. Get a good grip. Come over to the fan here. Woo! Okay. So on the fan. Oh, the fan and stir for a wow. Oh my god, this is like dark chocolate right there. Oh wow. Delicious. The aroma. Give it a little bit of a boost here. A little boost, okay. Woo! Alright, so we gotta keep stirring it. How long do you stir for? A few minutes? Three, four minutes. Yeah. Three, four minutes, okay. So three, four minutes. Cool to the touch and we're good to go. And so you can take them home like this, you know, just coffee beans roasted, or you can have them grind for you if you want to. Yeah, this is like very dark, very dark, dark. They really are pretty shiny. Yeah. <laughs> so you wanted to ground, here's we go. Don't close your eyes. Happen quickly. That's it. Wow, it smells great. So again, you can either take it home, just roasted coffee beans, or you can get it ground. I got it grounded because I don't have a machine at home, so <laughs> easier for me, right? Mm -hmm. And it smells so good, like pure chocolate. And you were saying sometimes it smells like just nutty, right? Yeah, lighter roast, nuttier. Lighter roast. Yeah, oils bring a lot of that uh, chocolate smell coming through. Just getting the air out. <laughs> Take it over to the ceiling. Basically the vacuum seal, right? right? Thank you so much for the tour. Thank you. Amazing. Enjoy. When you come to Kona, come up here to Kona Coffee. See the plantation and roast your own coffee. I've actually never done it before. I'm super happy I did because it was an experience and I can't wait to get home and share that coffee with my wife. Now, let's go to Kona Brewing and try some beers. I'm super excited. The place looks amazing. Quick 10 minute drive and we are here at Kona Brewing. 
Kona Brewing right here at Brewery Block. So it's like a warehouse area. And over here, as you can see, all the kegs. Hey! David! Oh my gosh, so good to see you. I'm Mary Melissa. I'm the marketing manager with Kona Brewing Company. I want to show you our awesome brewery. Come on, let's check it out. <laughs> first put these on all right let's do this ready to go ready let's do it <laughs> wow beautiful so man how you doing it's brian yeah, he's brian. one of our brian. brewers nice to meet you david nice david. to meet you david. awesome yeah. all right so this is kona brewing company uh we have a three vessel brew house it's a 25 barrel system uh each barrel of beer is about 248 pints so in one batch of beer we'll brew 6200 pints total uh, here on a weekly, any given day, we'll brew three batches of beer per day, uh, about four to five days per week. So how many beers do you guys brew in total right now? Um, we have a pretty diverse um, array. We do about 20 different beers, uh, about 12 to 15 of those are going to be standard, and then we'll have our backyard batches and our seasonals. Um, so anywhere from 20 to you know 25 beers we'll always have on tap. So back. which ones do you recommend like, up top? Uh, What's your favorite? Uh, for me, I love the backyard batch. You know, all the beer that we brew here stays here. Uh, but the backyard batches are only the beers you can get here at this pub or at the Cocoa Pub. Uh, one of my favorite ones currently is our seasonal called Purple Grain. It's an Ode to Prince. Um, it is a red ale brewed with uh, grains of paradise and lavender. So yeah, here at Kona, we brew about 12,000 barrels per year annually. All the beer that we brew here stays here on the islands. Right now, currently, we're racking some beer. Uh, we have our state of the art system here. Uh, we can currently fill one keg and clean one keg at a time. So 12,000 barrels of beer goes through, gets filled one keg at a time here. All right, David, that was fun. Now let's go drink the best beer in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's too funny. Yeah. And you were saying it's the greenest, like, Sustainability wise, yes. the greenest brewery on the planet. The, the new one, yeah. The new one. Mm -hmm. okay, the new one's being built across the uh, area. About 500 yards down the street, yeah. Okay. It's going to be one of the greenest breweries in the world. We're going to have like 50% um, gray water reclamation, uh, CO2 reclamation. It's going to be awesome. And they're going to the do like 11 yeah, times yeah. The, the amount of beer. Right, right. 11 yeah, times. 11 times. Yeah. Wow. Almost. Incredible. Yeah. All right, let's go try some of the beers. All right, guys, here we have five of the 20 beers. I'm only trying five, obviously, drink responsibly. And yeah, so here we have a variety. Obviously, the color, really beautiful. Right here, we have Big Wave. This is a golden ale. This is like their flagship beer. They sell a lot of this all around the world. Next up, we have, this is called the Grind Stout. So this is a stout beer. It's beautiful. I love stouts, love dark beers. Next up, what do we have here? This is the Hibiscus. This is an IP. IPAs and the brew IPA, so it has bubbles, really different. Can't wait to try it. And here we have purple grain, which is basically like a, it's almost like a barley wine slash amber, but it's not a barley wine. So they make it, they, they pass it through like a second process of the barley wine, so it lowers the alcohol level. Looks really good. And lastly, we have squad goal, and squad goal is a quad, a Belgian quad. Can't wait to try this. We're gonna start from here to here. Let's go. Golden ale, very light, very crafty. This is perfect for the beach. This is why it's so popular because you can drink it any time of day, anywhere in the world. Really hot day. This is perfect on the beach. You know, it's Hawaii, right? Next up, we have the stout. Oh, I love this. You know, it roasted taste, almost like coffee beans. Oh, this is amazing. This is a good stout. If you guys haven't tried stout, you have to try them. They're so good. Next up, Hibiscus Brew IPA. Oh, I love it. The bubbles. Yeah, they're there. Yeah. And I also, actually, what I like about this IPA is not too hoppy. You know, it's not like overbearing. In a way, sometimes it's like too much. You know, double IPAs, it's like crazy hop. It's perfect. And actually, the bubble is something really unique. I've never actually had beer like this. But now this is like the barley wine amber mix, right? Oh wow. So it is a mix between both. 
So I have a little bit of that barley, a little bit, not too much. And you have the amber. Amber, it, it's funny because amber is a beer that's uh, it's a little hard to understand it, but it's always like this reddish color, right? Next up we have squad goals. I love triples, I'm sure I'm gonna love a quad. That is tasty, super flavorful. What is that? Vanilla. It's, it's, it's heavy, I know for sure yeah. it's heavy. I mean, it's a heavy beer, uh, but really good. You said it's unfiltered, right? It's an unfiltered beer. All right, this is my favorite of all these. All right, so one of the coolest things I've ever seen at breweries is when they mix beers. And here they mix two different beers, right? So yeah. four different beers, yeah. two different beers they make, right? Yeah. So what's this one? That's the Almond Joy. It's our Black Sam Porter and our Cocoa Brown mix. So Black Sam Porter is like a chocolatey, and then with the Cocoa Brown is coconut. Okay. So it kind of makes it like that Almond Joy Almond flavor. Joy. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And this one? And this is the Lava Rock. So this is our um, Red Ale Lava Man and our Fire Rock Pale Ale, which was one of our first beers we ever brewed. Okay. Was Fire Rock. But yeah, mix it with Lava Man and, it, and you get a Lava Rock. A Lava Rock. Yeah. This is cool. I, I like the name. You yeah. guys are really like, it's really yeah. play on words, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to try this one first. Yes. That's super popular. Oh, wow. It really is. It's like a candy bar. Yeah, it's exactly a candy bar. It's crazy. So you said almond butter. No. Almond joy. Almond joy, almond yes. joy. Yes. Almond like, joy. Sometimes I feel like a nut, but sometimes I don't. Yeah, no, it's, it's so joy. different. Not, not a mounds, it's a joy. <laughs> That is like crazy good. So good. Like that should be on the menu. It's like because no one knows no, about that's it, right? Secret like, menu. Secret that's menu. Secret menu. Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. Now yeah. you know. Now you know. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> secret menu. And this one? Lava Rock. So our Lava Man is our red ale, and then it's mixed with our Fire Rock, which is our pale ale. Super hoppy. Super hoppy. Um, the Lava Man kind of Fire Rock's really hoppy. Um, the Lava Man kind of tones it down a little bit, but. but yeah. I mean, it's a hoppy beer. I would yeah. think, like, if you gave it to me, I'd be like, it's it's not as crazy as an IPA because you you tell the difference, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely hoppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fire rocks, yeah, mm, hoppy. It's good. And, mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. But this is like the best. This is addictive. I know, I know. It's like so good, and it's so cold in Hawaii right now. So like, <laughs> I know it really is cold. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you're getting the four seasons today, right? <laughs> Cold, hot, all the windy, things. rain, no, rain all the wind. We got it all here, so. So yeah. what are we gonna try for food now? Okay, so we're gonna do pepperoni rolls. And what? Yes, oh my gosh, amazing. And um, sashimi, oh, and okay. um, a pokey, or tartar, ahi tartar. So we get our fish um, every morning fresh. I mean, if you're in Hawaii, you have to be eating tuna all day. All the things. Yeah, so we have a local fisherman, Jeff Silverman, and he brings us fish every morning. Great. Yeah, so our, our pokey and fish and everything is like super fresh. And then, which is also fun, um, we use some of our spent grain from brewing um, okay. to make our pizza dough. The pizza dough? No way. So we have three different things. We have ahi tuna poke, right? That's poke? Yeah. We have... Tartar. Tartar. Awesome. And our pepperoni rolls. Pepperoni rolls. Yes. So it's uh, like cinnamon buns? Like pretty much. It's like a cinnamon roll. And okay. uh, we actually use our spent grain from the um, brewery make, to make our dough and all of our pizza dough actually. And uh, so it's oh, like wow. a cinnamon roll with marinara, ranch dressing. That's all amazing. the good things. All yeah, the good things. All the good things. Parmesan cheese. It's ridiculous. It's a pizza roll. The cheese throughout, like it's so good. Handmade, like every day. <clears throat> so besides beer, go with pizza items. Yes. Pizza and this. We're also getting a pizza later. We'll hold off for that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we still have to talk about I know, I know. The, the fish. I know. And it's like, <laughs> mm. Which is amazing. So next up, we're going with the ahi tuna tartare. It comes with avocado in the middle, we have rice, and we have sweet shoyu glaze. Sweet shoyu glaze. Let's see. Let's cut it like that. Wow. Look at that. 
is like basically sushi tartare, right? Yeah. Mm. Oh man, combination, contrast, mm. spicy, so spicy. Yeah. Tiny bit. Spicy. Not bad. I mean. I think it's like it's like spicy mayo, right? Yeah. But it's like a little a little spicy. over. Yeah. And you have caviar on top. I mean, delicious combination here. I'll have a bite. Mm. But see, here in Hawaii, we use chopsticks. Oh, I do. Actually, I'm really terrible at chopsticks. No, I am <laughs> chop. <laughs> By the way, shout out to my friend Chopstick Travel. That's like yeah. I love. Chopsticks. Yeah. Yeah, I've been using them since I was like five years old. Oh my god, I'm terrible at them, but You're terrible? I can't. Uh -huh. No, I am, but I I can kind of manage. I'm good. I just go like that. Just take big, big amounts. So what? It's it's actually the best way to eat. Spicy. <laughs> right? Oh man, you have the creaminess of avocado. Yeah. That's like really like chopped up. Yeah, like. Ah, oh my god. Balances it. Yeah. So good. This actually gives like a bounce. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ooh, I agree. Nice and hot. And then right here, we have basically sashimi. Yeah. So it's basically it's poke, poke, right? Yeah, poke. Yeah. So this is caught every morning, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a local fisherman, Jeff Silverman. And um, him and his gang go out and catch our fish every morning and bring this fresh fish in here. I mean, I've said it multiple times here in Hawaii, but like, you can't come here and not eat this. No, 100%. It's like some of the best fish. And I love you guys. Don't like skip out. Like, these are big clumps. Chunks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. chunks. Like, yeah. No, it's amazing. Mm. Wow. Yeah, caught right here, so that's amazing. Oh my god. So good. Captain Cook Pizza? Yeah, it's like one of our like most popular pizzas. Okay. It has all the meats that you want. Wow. Um, we got pepperoni, Canadian bacon. Um, so all the things. Sausage, tomatoes, olives. Thanks. <laughs> really a nice slice. Yeah. Okay, so it feels a little deep dish, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In terms of the crust, right? Yeah. Amazing. It is. Oh, well, they're all handmade. So all right. um, that's why actually why it takes a little longer to get out here. But um, they're all made by hand with our spent grain. Um, so we kind of don't really do like crust sizes, I guess. All right, yeah. And this is a medium size, right? That's, yeah, medium. Yeah, I know. That's my jam. The dough. Yeah. The dough is like superior. Yeah. So good. Yeah. And the cheese. What do you think of the crust though? I love the crust. I know you like you like a thin crust no, that you told me. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. But you like that? I actually right? like this because it's not like too like big, too fluffy. You know, just right. Yeah. Like it's not super thin. Yeah. And it's good. I mean, yeah. I feel like you need at least some sub some like some, substance, yeah. right? Absorption of the alcohol. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. My friends, the night is over. We had such a beautiful day today. Kona Coffee Estate tried some beautiful coffee, solid plantation, roasted our own coffee. Never done it before. Like, wow, what an experience. Really, really cool. Then drove down here back to Kona, went to Kona Brewing, got a tour of the entire brewery. You know, brew pub, brewery in the back, and here. They have like really unique beers, over 20 beers on tap. Incredible, incredible. I tried like, what was it? So five, the flight, and then I tried two of the mixing, which is so good. And then we had the food, obviously pokey. My favorite thing for sure was the pepperoni, like, like bun, a little pepperoni thing. Oh, so, so good. Hey, good morning everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from beautiful, super sunny Kona, the island of Hawaii, the big island. Today I'm very excited because I'm going to take you on a food tour and I'm also going to show you some spots you have to visit here in Kona. We're starting off right here at 808 Grinds Cafe. This place is famous for the local mocos and for their pancakes. Pancakes. I'm so excited. They look so delicious, creamy, coconut. Oh, I can't wait. Are you guys ready? Let's go inside and let's eat some delicious food. Yeah, 
Ну, мы два. And here we go. I got three different dishes, two local mogos and the pancakes. These are so beautiful. Look at this, the pancakes. These are the Mac nut short stack pancakes with coconut and coconut vanilla cream sauce. What? Incredible. Can't wait to try this. And over here we have local moko. There's a spam local moko. And over here we have the smoked pork one. So basically the difference here is, you know, the, obviously the meat, but throughout they have garlic, meat local fried rice and local beef gravy crazy crazy all right i think i'm gonna start with the pancakes i need to start with the pancakes they look way too good all right so let's dive in here wow super sunny day beautiful day mm, the vanilla cream sauce is to die for wow so so sweet Mmm, I yeah, gotta say it. Some of the best pancakes of all time. Wow, never had it before. Usually when you eat pancakes, you eat it with syrup. Mind-blowing. And I got the short stack. You can also get, you know, more, but I think short stack's good. Coconut vanilla cream, what a dish. And what usually people do here is they'll come, they'll get their local moco, and then they'll put this in the middle and they'll share it, right? Can't get enough of it. So what you should do is get some of this, the vanilla cream, put it all over, just like that. Oh yeah, fluffy pancakes. Mm. They're too good. This is the one thing you have to try when you come to Kona. Wow. So I'm gonna pull in this one, the smoked pork first. Smoked pork. So the first thing you do with the homogo is you go in and you crack the egg. <laughs> wow, not crack the egg, puncture the egg. Cut up a little bit, move it out. Oh wow, look at this, look at all that. Pork, fat, nice pieces of pork, whoa. This is so good, this looks phenomenal. Loco Mogo is a staple here on the Big Island. Mm -hmm. Wow, incredible. What a dish. Oh yeah, it's almost like caramelized pork. And they also have like thicker, like crunchier pieces at the end. Feels like bacon. Whoa. The best part is you get the yolk to like mix throughout. Really like binds the rice. A little bit of onions there and some more pork. It's unreal. What a dish. Loco Moco. Yesterday I tried four, and then I'm limit myself to two because they're addictive. So, so good. The caramelized pieces are like, it's almost like, like bacon with syrup, you know? Let's get some of that. Obviously, Loco Moco is a heavy dish, so pace yourself, you know? One of these is an entire meal. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Oh man. Love the pork. I'm gonna wait a sec there. And here, we have a spam one. So again, I'm not a huge fan of spam, but because spam is so popular here in Hawaii, you have to try it in all different varieties. So we're gonna try it here. Look, we'll go with spam. Just keep popping the yolk. Big piece of spam right in the middle. Right there, separate. So this one, I'm just gonna get a little bit of that. It's good. I mean, you really have to be a fan of Spam to enjoy it to the fullest. Um, you know, that one's definitely better. It's sweeter, it's juicier. So the rice, as you can see, is a little crispy in the bottom. They burnt the bottom a little bit. It's good, I like that. I love having like a little bit of crispy rice. So you get that, mix it up, 
Another thing I love about these locomobiles is their beef gravy. Really different. And it makes it, you know, like having the gravy throughout, you know, combine all the rice and then, you know, having the yolk in there. So what I think you should do is definitely come here, get one locomobile, and then share the pancakes with friends. It always grinds cafe. Wow, breakfast was huge and delicious. Incredible. 808 Grinds Cafe is a must for breakfast when you come here to Kona. Oh man, that is so good, so good. And yeah guys, so we're gonna go explore more Kona now. Just gonna go to a surf shop and try to find myself a bandana, like a little headband. Uh, you know, Hawaiians here, like, if you go to like hulas, you know, like hula, like the traditional hulas, they, the, the men uh, have these beautiful, colorful, like bandanas or headbands. I'm just trying to find one, trying to change up the look. And yeah, let's see Kona. So after about a five minute drive, we made it here to the center of Kona, to Kona Inn Shopping Village. So basically this is a, like made up of like small boutique shops. It's like open air, so you can walk outside, lots of shops. This is the best place to go shopping for anything local Hawaiian. So right next to that shopping center is actually like a little market going on, and here you can buy some souvenirs. As you can see, this is like surfboards, like hand painted surfboards. They're also carved, really nice. They also have, you know, this for like necklaces, big beads. They have lots of fruits over here, pineapples, dragon fruit, star fruit. I mean, they have never ending amount of mangoes. We're gonna walk through here and see if I find anything interesting. I'm really looking for the headband, but I might also buy one of these surfboards for my wall because there's no real mask here in Hawaii. It's not about a mask culture. So maybe one of these. This is this is nice. Hawaii. It's just Hawaii. I actually rather it's not say anything, but it's always gonna do that. It's gonna be like Hawaii, Kona, Kona, Hawaii. Let's see. Yeah, not right now. More fruits, bananas, and Pineapples. Pineapples are king here in Hawaii. Some watermelon. So here in this market, they also have masks. As you can see, I just don't know how authentic these masks are, right? So really, I think I'm gonna go for my wall with a hook, because hooks is something that's traditional. I mean, they have these huge ones. If I can get them down, huge. Look at this, guys. I like the big one, 60 bucks. 60 US for this, huge. Or, Go a little smaller. This one's 40 bucks. I don't know, the 41 is like, it's nice because it's, you know, it's a little petite, but at the same time, I think the big one's better. If it's 20 bucks, big one's bigger, right? I don't know. I gotta decide. But I think the hook is the better option because it's more local. You know, the big thing here is, you know, the sea, the ocean. So, I mean, let's keep looking. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, you watched it? Okay, so I decided I'm going with this hook. First we find Maui. <laughs> so my daughter's fourth birthday is coming up and I've been looking around to see what I can find for her and I found this. So it's a necklace with Maui's hook, right? It's awesome. She's a big Moana fan. So this is the Kalua Kona Farmer's Market. Roughly 30 vendors and it's very similar, right? Souvenirs, there's also fruit vendors. And yeah, here you can come. You know, buy souvenirs, flowers, they have chains, necklaces, lots of wood carvings, you got masks, you have like surfboards, and obviously the hooks. So we did it, we explored the farmer's market, got myself a hook, got my daughter a hook. Amazing, love it. Great place to go for souvenirs. And yeah, amazing day out. As you can see, super sunny, really hot right now. I think we're gonna walk around, see what else we find. Let's explore Kona. So we just left Kona and we're driving 20 minutes south to Shaka Tacos. This place is famous for having the best fish tacos on the island, on the big island of Hawaii. I am so excited. The drive is beautiful as you can see. Over here we have the Pacific Ocean, we have green hills, houses up there, lots of sun. And yeah, Shaka Tacos is like a food truck slash it's a restaurant and they have a million dollar view. Are you guys ready? Let's go eat some delicious fish tacos. This side of the island is it's like, you know, a hill going up towards the volcanoes. So it's always like this. You're always gonna have a view of the ocean from anywhere you are. The Oha Cave Historic Preserve right here. Beautiful, I had no idea. Wow, Hawaii, so beautiful, love it. Wow, what a beautiful view. So when you're driving from Kona all the way down to Chaka Tacos, you can stop here and see this gorgeous, gorgeous view. Look how blue the water is. Hawaii, blowing me away everywhere I turn. That's it, we made it here. 
Shaka tacos. Excited. Hungry. So Shelby, you guys have been in business for two years and you guys make the best fish tacos on the island. Uh, yeah, widely known as the best fish tacos on the island. Okay, yeah. and so yeah. we have two different varieties here, right? So this yeah. is a different type of tortilla, right? It's a little bit, it's not really a different type of tortilla, it's just prepared a little bit differently. Okay. Um, so this is one of our regular tacos. Um, it's just a corn tortilla, a white corn tortilla that we fry in a little bit of oil to get it crispy, okay. um, fish. Onion, cilantro, cheese, lettuce, slaw. Um, our slaw is a dairy-free slaw. We do pickled onions and then guacamole. If you like it, it's free if you want it. Awesome. Um, we do a lime crema and a shaka sauce. And then this one, what we do is we, while we're frying the tortilla, we put cheese on it. We use a cheddar jack cheese. We sprinkle it on there and we let it kind of melt and then we flip it over and let it get, you know that crispy cheese taste? Yeah. That's what we and want. And he slaps it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and he, he does. He spanks the tortillas because <laughs> they've been bad. <laughs> and uh, uh, that actually makes it so that they don't fall apart so easy when you bend them. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah. an order comes with three tacos, right? You can order them a la carte, but yeah, three is like a typical order. It's like a taco plate. And we yeah. got lots of sauces here. So yes. like to mix, this one's the hottest. Yeah, that's so that's this one is the same one. Okay. It's our lava sauce. Lava um, sauce. It's a honey habanero. It's made with coconut uh, water also. Oh my Super God. good. Um, our most popular one is this one, which is our spicy hula girl is the original name of it, but it's just, we just call it a mango Hawaiian chili pepper sauce. And that's okay. pretty much exactly what's in it is mango and Hawaiian chili peppers. Sounds amazing. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna start regular, no sauce. Or should we? Yeah, uh, you should try it once without sauce and then you yeah. should add these as you like them. I mix this one and this one, the lava and the mango. Okay. So good. So you mix, okay, perfect. Yeah. Exactly. All right, yeah. so I'm gonna just grab one of these. Yeah, I would start with a regular one and then move on to the cheesy tortilla and add the sauces. I'm gonna make it how I like it because I know how they taste regular. So let's eat. Okay, awesome. Oh, wow. I eat here every day and I'm always stoked. Mmm. <laughs> I don't know, I think I need a few more bites to like acknowledge it's the best yeah. in the world, right? Right, and then add the sauce and you'll really, you'll really feel it. Oh, wow. Mmm. Creamy, lovely mm -hmm. avocado, light on spices, obviously. Mm -hmm. Oh, so fresh. We yeah. grill the, Love it. we grill the fish. It's a little bit of tahini and salt. Mm hmm So good. I love tahini. It's probably one of my best, my favorite flavors. So I'm gonna go, a little crazy, I'm gonna try it. Mm -hmm. Lava sauce. Lava. See, spicy, so I'm gonna go a little bit. Why is it a Kamala? Mmm. It's okay. That was crazy. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was it's like, hot. oh my god. Mmm. <laughs> but it's almost like a. I don't know what to tell you about it. It's like a. Almost like peanut butter or something? I feel like it has like a creaminess to it. Honey? Okay. It's honey. Honey and coconut water. Wow. Yeah. And the other one is... Uh, mango. Mango. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right? Are so good. I'm borrow your mango sauce. Mm. Wow. Fantastic. I literally want to put the mango sauce on every food that I eat. Ooh. Still too hot. Because I only had a little bit of it on mine. So this one's your signature taco? Okay. That's like how I like my tacos. I put a little bit of mango. She's been eating a lot of Ooh, I'm so sure, like, I need something to drink too. Yeah, like, but some of this mango. Yeah. So this is basically almost pure mango juice. As you can see, it's more watered down. The lava sauce is thicker, more of a puree, and obviously habaneros. So mix it. Ooh. Mmm. Right? 
<laughs> it's an amazing, it's like an incredible marriage. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Didn't think the tacos could get better, and then we no. put cheese on the shell, right? The cheese, the yeah. cheese. I mean, cheese melted throughout. Yeah, the Everything taste of fresh. the cheese is like, I, I just love it. I just love it. Mm -hmm. And the other meats are good, but the fish is like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah? Yeah. So it's like, well, It's an incredible fish towel. Mm -hmm. So many different flavors, the textures. The pickled all, onions, All right? fresh pickled onions. Mm -hmm. Are we a little crazy again? Oh, you're crazy. Oh my god. It's hot. <laughs> Woo! I'm I mean, to sweat. definitely you should try it though. So for this one, I'm gonna mix a little bit of both, right? Just yeah. drizzle. Mm. And then, all right, so I'll squeeze some lime here. Third one. Third one. Oh man, this is so good. Yeah. So most yeah, most people eat three pretty uh pretty easily. Mmm. Okay. The best fish taco. Yeah, the yeah. best fish taco. The best. I don't really have any yeah. big mm. avos right now, but. Oh yeah, our avos. Um, this is the reason we do the yeah, free guacamole. Free all the time. Okay. Oh, well. kind of small, but um, they're still bigger than most. You know? Here. Incredible. These are small avos. This is good. We had, uh, we had so a. So lots of uh, avocados up here, right? Lots. All and they all look like this. It's all farms. They all look like that. Like it's a lot of wow. These are beautiful. Look, look at this, guys. What is this, bro? It's a, it's a lime. <laughs> and this is like no, nothing extra. No, that, <laughs> it's Hawaii grown. Yeah. Hawaii grown. Lots yep. of sun, right? Well, yeah, lots and of sun, lots of rain. Lots of volcanic soil. Wow. Yeah. So let me ask you, you guys. Besides tacos, you make quesadillas. Yep. Burritos. Burritos. Bowls. We do a really awesome steak salad. A steak salad. A steak salad. That's Riley's creation. It's uh, incredible. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is good. Three we, is, is a lot. Um, we do everything. We we can pretty much accommodate any dietary preference. And what's the price point on the tacos? Um, so it's four dollars per taco. The fish is a dollar more, so it's five dollars per taco for the fish. Mm. Um, on regular days, if you come on a Tuesday wow. or a Thursday, we celebrate Taco Tuesday and Thursday by doing a dollar off all of our tacos. So today, your fish tacos normally three for fourteen. We're three for twelve because it's Thursday. Um, so all of our other tacos are three for nine. You're, you can mix and match them. Wow. We do carne asada, we do pork. Um, we have a veggie mix that's quinoa, broccoli, and corn. We do um, chicken and it's all awesome. And yeah, all of those are $3 each today. Fish is $4 each. Sorry, I feel like I shouldn't leave anything. Huh? I hate leaving the vegetables. No, that's I'm the same way, dude. That's, no there way. are forks on the table if you want them, but I do the same thing you do. I'm like, my hands are already dirty. And doing the Indian style, you know? Yeah, you might as well. Why not? And and sometimes I'm weird about plastic. These are like super compostable forks too, so. Mm. Mm. Well, congratulations, guys. Yeah, this thank you. Like congratulations phenomenal. on having the best tacos of your life. <laughs> <laughs> we have geckos outside. They love this mango sauce. It's probably, it's like candy to them. So she says, just put it out there and yeah. they'll come up and start drinking it. Just set it out here. Usually they just walk right up to it. There's one right there. See him? There, buddy. Look how friendly they are. <laughs> you could probably pet that gecko. Oh, man. Shaka tacos, fish tacos, some of the best I've ever had on the planet. Delicious, super fresh, crunchy, creamy, lava sauce, super spicy, habanero. The mango sauce, a little spicy as well, but pure like mango juice. Wow, so good. With that view, I mean, you have to come here. It's here in the Captain Cook area. So if you guys didn't know, Captain Cook is a British explorer who came here like in the late 1700s. He arrived here, this is like where he like first arrived. And that's why the area is named Captain Cook. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna drive straight onto the water and see the Pacific Ocean from Captain Cook. Let's go. I had no idea how the road was to get down to the Pacific Ocean, but basically it's a super winding road going downhill, lots of trees, farmland, houses, and over here to the right, look at that, look at the ocean. Woo, beautiful. So the drive was like 10 minutes, not so bad, all the way downhill, and here we are, Pacific Ocean. This is my first Hawaiian beach visit ever. I've been on the island for three days, this is my first beach, and I gotta say, it is gorgeous. Love how you have, like the mountains right here, the waves are crashing on these lava rocks, you have crabs, I mean, crystal clear water. 
Yeah, guys, today has been awesome. Awesome day here in Kona. We start off at 808 Brian's Cafe. We had some delicious local mocos. The pork one was fantastic. Also, the pancakes. Those pancakes are so freaking good. Absolutely delicious. You have to try those pancakes when you come here to Kona. Then we saw the Kona Farmer's Market. We walked around, saw all the souvenirs. I bought a hook and I also bought a hook for my daughter, like a necklace with a hook. Really cool experience there. Everybody's super friendly. Then after that, we drove over here to Captain Cook area and went to Shaka Tacos. Shaka Tacos, the best fish tacos on the island for sure. Probably the best in Hawaii. They were absolutely delicious. Just like so good. You have to try the sauces for sure. The mango and the lava, oh, and combine them. That's like the winning combination. And then we drove down here to the Captain Cook area to see the beach. I'm here in the Pacific Ocean, guys. This is called Aiha. Three, four, right. Keep your fingers as close together as you can. With life in the left or Good evening everyone, I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from beautiful, super sunny Kona, the island of Hawaii. Today I'm so excited because I'm taking you to eat some delicious traditional Hawaiian cuisine here at the Feeding Leaf Kitchen and Ukazuya, Ukazuya. And basically what we're gonna do today is we're gonna get a lesson on how to make lao lao. Lao lao is a traditional pork dish. It's basically steamed pork that has been wrapped in a taro leaf we're also going to eat some poke and some musubi. Are you guys ready? Let's go inside and let's learn how to make lao lao. What's up? My girl, how you doing? I'm good. I'm so excited to eat. <laughs> I mean cook. And then eat. <laughs> Have you tried lao lao? I have it. So this is my first time. Okay. I'm learning so much. It's so good. It's delicious. It falls apart in your mouth. And I love the taro leaf. Oh, <laughs> and this, what is this? This is the tea leaf. This is the tea leaf. So the tea leaf is what insulates the lao lao. Which the lao lao is actually made out of this, right? Which this is a, um, a taro leaf. Mm -hmm. So the lao lao, the, the ingredients are wrapped inside of here. And then when this gets wrapped, then it gets put in here. And this gets, it gets wrapped up in here. Tracy! Yes! What are we doing today? Today you guys are going to learn how to make lao lao and spam musubi and ume musubi. Amazing. <laughs> I, I can't lie. I didn't love my spam musubi last time I tried it, but you're saying yours is gonna be way better. Way better, way, way better. Cause you're gonna make it yourself. I can do that. <laughs> Basically musubi is almost like sushi, right? But they put spam on top instead of sashimi, right? Correct. Yeah, it's like a Hawaiian, Hawaiian musubi. It's like a Hawaiian sushi. We're gonna have nori with rice and then seasoned spam. So we'll have it in like a teriyaki sauce and then more rice on top. Filipino, it's a Filipino um, milk steam cake. And there's like a house jam that we did on the bottom. It's a berry coolie jam Ooh. and then steamed milk cake. These leaves came from my yard. <laughs> Every Hawaiian household should have tea leaves in their yard. <laughs> so we kind of use it for not just food, but we use it for making lei and it's kind of like a placemat. So this is how we start making lao lao. You nick the leaf on the back side, right where this part cracks here. And then we usually use the edge of the table to uh, strip it. So you use the end of the table like this. And you take that spine off completely and all the way. Okay, so strip, so the way it works, right? Where's the, where's it? All right. So, yep. uh, and you use the edge of the table to roll it up. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Good job. Awesome. Done. Mm -hmm. Done. Right. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Good job. Awesome. So that was a tea leaf. Ti or here in Hawaii it's called ki ki uh -huh. ki. So that's what they use to actually wrap it at the very end and then steam it. And now what they're gonna do is they're gonna salt the pork. That pork looks phenomenal. And then we do a combination of pork, pork belly, and the actual pork fat. I was gonna say it yeah. looks a little different. So they get three taro leaves. They place the pork nicely into it. Then they wrap it. And then after she goes and wraps it with a tea leaf. Let's see it. Okay, so the first step, obviously, get the pork, place it inside the taro leaf. So he gets uh, just regular pork, like, you know, flesh and pork fat. Can't forget the fat. Need the fat. Fat's the best part, <laughs> always. For me, it's the best. Gelatin, you know? You're right. Okay, and then we'll fold it. Fold it, perfect. Great. So make it super snug. 
And then you go over here, first leaf, right? So two leaves, first one smaller. Make it really snug. Like that, all the way. And then what you do is you turn it. Again, super snug. And then when you get here, you yep. rip, right? Yep, you split it. Split it. Crisscross it under. Crisscross it under like this. Yes. Yep. Perfect. Yep, up and around the sides. And then you tie your shoes. And then you tie your shoes. There you there go. There you go. Oh, oh. No! <laughs> awesome. Thank you, thank you. Then we would load it into a steamer, and then we would steam it for about five hours. And you want it, you need it to go that long because you want the fat and the pork to really melt. And then you need to cook the luau leaf inside or the taro leaf inside. So five hours is about what you need to do to get this nice and tender and soft. We are going to do a traditional onigiri musubi with a pickled plum or an ume. We pickle it here, ours is honey. So it's a little bit sweet, sour, salty. Um, that's just the way we like it. I'm, um, I'm a salt girl, so I like my rice to be a little bit saltier than normal. There is no real um, measurement for salt. We just kind of shake it, and then I kind of go by the feel to know how much salt I like. You take some of the rice. The rice has to be hot. Almost too hot to touch. And then we form it by hand into these triangles. You make a hole in the center. You put one of the plums in the middle. You fill the hole with a little bit more rice. And you keep turning and pressing until you get the right size. And then we take a piece of nori. And you wrap it that way. I wet my hand again because I like it to stick. And then you, you keep turning and pressing until the seaweed sticks. And you get the perfect onigiri. <laughs> <laughs> Teriyaki spam musubi over here. So when you're doing the musubi, I usually there's two different sides on the ume. Mm -hmm. Then I usually put the rougher part up top, put the rice, spread them out. Mm -hmm. Put the spam. I'll press it right there, shape them down, and more rice, oh. then one more time. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try the spam musubi. 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 <laughs> musubi. All right. Can I grab one. Yep. Woo. Oh, it's, it is hot. It's hot. Nice. So you just okay. eat it like a sandwich, yeah? Just yeah. a sandwich. Mm. I mean, you'll find these at mm. like gas stations, mm -hmm. and mm. it'll be as simple mm. as if you go to a, a 7-Eleven and you got hard boiled eggs. I mean, it's easy. It's basically your take on sushi, you know, mm -hmm. like a sushi roll. So we have two different chickens here. We have the furikake chicken, and we also have Korean chicken. <laughs> furikake obviously is just um, just like seaweed sprinkled on top, right? Mmm. <laughs> it's literally this. Oh, it's nice. Not too spicy. Mm. I mean, light batter, <laughs> great chicken. I love the stew story. <laughs> and this is the Korean fried chicken. KFC. This is gonna be good, I'm sure. Mm. Honey? Amazing. Honey? Mirin, yeah. Mirin, sugar, sugar. Yeah, so sugar, yeah. I had that like that sweet taste yeah. to it. Mmm. Mm. I love this. The sweet chicken. Mm. You must really like it. Oh, I like one. it. So this is the ume musubi, which looks like a unigiri, you know, triangle shaped, wrapped with the seaweed, and then she like, you know, spilled a little bit of water so it like sort of like sealed it in a way. So pickle plum. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of rice. <laughs> mm. You get there. <laughs> Plum's nice. In terms of pickle, it's not like crazy like uh, 
you know that sensation when you eat pickles. Right. It's not too, it's not too bad. Yeah. So we try and balance the the acid in the that pickle with honey. Mm -hmm. mm. To give it that sweet. Mm, sweet. Salt sour mm. contrast. Mm. Seed. Oh, seed. Seed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's good though. Now you know you got all I like that. Well, that's it. <laughs> okay, so this is the lao lao that was wrapped earlier. Um, this is poi, which is the food of our people. This is actually an uwala kalo mix, so it's sweet potato and taro. It's, it's a half-half, 50-50 split, so a lot of people don't really care for poi. Uh, this one's a little bit sweeter, so it's kind of like the beginner's poi. It's our favorite one, though, this one. This is lechan, which is just fried pork belly with a spicy soy sauce. This is kalua pork, so he takes the pork and he flavors it and you you would put it in an emu traditionally and then this is uwala sweet potato which is also in the poi and then the poke options there there's the shoyu poke on the far side and then the one that's closer here is the spicy ahi all right so we're, we're gonna start with lechon or yes yeah lechon okay <laughs> which one is that okay this one, this one. <laughs> the fried pork belly, the fried like, pork yeah. belly. it's so good let's eat it. this it's salted so we bake it off first Mm. to cook it through and then he fries it after to kind of mm. give it that finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he salts it really a little heavily to okay. bake, but and That's then nice. in the sauce, um, what do you have in your sauce? So it's um so basically it's like the juices of the pork mm -hmm. mixed with the sauce, but then you have like multiple layers. So the textures yeah. right. are super like they're different. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then in the sauce he has mm -hmm. soy. Always pepper, soy. Always pepper. right. Chili pepper? Oh, chili pepper. Um, mm. Chili pepper water. And then. Patis? Patis. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fish sauce is in there too. A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. The tomato is a little spicy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. That's Hawaiian chili pepper. That's Hawaiian chili pepper? Have you ever had one it's of good. those? It's good. No, I'll, I'll try it now. You want one? I'll try it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You I love one. it. I love oh, it. Oh, man. What the heck? It's super spicy. It is. I, I think it's one of the hottest. Hawaiian chili pepper. Oh, it's probably not that hot because it was in the refrigerator. So it's not gonna it's not gonna come off hot. No, it's hot. <laughs> 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 it's not like habanero, but it's almost like cayenne, like mm. up there. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. So basically it's shredded pork. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. away you get the burst of flavor. Mm-hmm. Lots of flavor. Very soft. Yeah. Moist. Smoky? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. That a little bit. Not so bad. <laughs> it's so soft. Yeah, it is. And wow. It's in your mouth. It's good. It's good mm. for slider, right? Wow, this is so good. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and you eat like this, right? <laughs> Just like this? Uh huh. With your poi. Don't forget your poi. Yes. The poi. You don't yes. eat the poi with the food. Mm -hmm. It's not that bad, right? No, it's like a puree. It's uh, it's like dense. You would eat the mm -hmm. It's almost like yeah. um, a little sticky taste, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little bit of sweet mm -hmm. from the sweet mm -hmm. potato. I was gonna say you yeah. Can taste it tastes that. like sweet potato. Mm -hmm. Sweet potato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's good. Bit, yeah. So you put it into yeah. the poi? I put my food so, into well, the poi. Yeah. You put this into yeah. the poi. I put the pork in my mouth and then I die hard. Ate it. Yeah. I mean, why not? It was good. Look at that. Instead mm. of eating it just by itself. Oh yeah, it's good. It's like, mm -hmm. eating it with something like how you would eat Spanish rice. Mm. Right? Mm. Spanish rice with fried beans. And oh, right. together? Same, same idea. Yeah. Great same, combination. Same Good yeah. combination, huh? And mm -hmm. that's the mistake everybody It's bland. Yeah. It's a little sweet, but it's bland. Yeah. But like this, you have the savory. Yeah. You have the yeah. sweet. Together. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, this is the way to do it. Mixing it. You're telling me to put the poke into the poi. Correct. <laughs> you could. Like yeah. for real. Yes, yeah, for real. Okay. She's like, yes, you could. Right. This one, probably, <laughs> probably this one over that one because that one has like a little more sauce, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah, this yeah. one's just like more, this is for sure like soy, right? Or is it Correct. teriyaki? Sure. So a little bit of that like there. It. Wow. I learned this on the big eye. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to take it back to With me. poke. Yeah. Yep. I can dig this. Mm. Mm. Right? Oh wow. Yeah. It's different. Mm. I'll go with the poke alone. Ah. <laughs> Try the poke alone, yeah. Mm. Mm. I mean it's still really good. Yeah, yeah. But I think the the pork is better. Better yeah, combination. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Bye. Oh my god. Oh yeah. This. Uh. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
purple sweet potato. Mm -hmm. mm. It's called Uwala. 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 Oh, it's awesome. I love it. And it's not too soft because we usually like bake it a little too much. Right, right. So right. It's like super soft, it just falls right. apart. This one's like almost like a Deep, nice, yeah. like a thick chip in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. And the grand finale, the Lao Lao. <laughs> Woo! Can't wait. That one doesn't want to come out. Just grab it. Yeah, just grab it, right? Okay, guys, so I'm going to open it. So, untie it. Oh, that's going to be great. Okay. Flip it open. So, am I doing it right? Yep, you take out the outside leaf. Take out the outside leaf. direction, and then the other leaf that goes in the other Okay, leaf. perfect. Mm -hmm. right here. Yeah, all this rubbish, huh? Oh, man. Wow, it's so, like, and yeah, oily. It's, like, first, super oily. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that right there. Thank you. Just falls out. Nice so just get in here. Support. Yeah. Yeah. Break it up. Yep. Oh, nice there we go. Look at that. Like, yeah. Ah. Flesh. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Pork. No, I think pork is. Look at this. Pork's look at this. The best right here. The fat. Yeah. 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 Probably the belly part that you're getting. Gone. Yeah. Just slipped down my throat. Right. Man. Amazing. Man. And then so. Usually, you put the fat in to keep mm. the moisture oh yeah it provides moisture mm. so that yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm yeah this is cool a taro leaf is incredible yeah so if you want more taro obviously just ask them to wrap more leaves mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. mm. no i absolutely love flavor. the fat this might be it's called isla in hawaii isla mm -hmm. the isla. Oh. isla so glow what's your verdict on this this is amazing i think it's a tie. My favorite dish. It's a tie between this and what was that big rice sandwich? <laughs> oh, the spam sushi. Spam yeah, mm -hmm. and with the the spam sushi as well. Well, everything's just had like a different type of like savory. It's just it's different flavors, different textures. Mm -hmm. So what do we have here? Puto. Puto. Let's do it. And this is a oh. Filipino dish, right? <laughs> yeah. There's. A, there's so what's in the bottom? There's a, a surprise. <laughs> there's a surprise in the bottom. <laughs> Oh, so it's like a jelly? <laughs> so what type of jelly is this? Like a cherry? Uh, actually, it's strawberry, blueberry, okay. raspberry, yeah. Strawberry, oh. blueberry, raspberry. So basically, this is a muffin. Mm. 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 Very berry. Jelly? Very oh. berry. And coconut? Mm-hmm. Coconut. 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 I like it. You like it? Nice, fluffy, lots of flavor, obviously. Mm. My friend, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. The best food on the Big Island. We learned how to make musubi. Yes. Musubi. We learned how to make lao lao. Correct. We ate it all. Correct. My favorite thing. The Hawaiian chili pepper. <laughs> that, was, that was brutal. That was brutal. I mean, everything was so good. I think for sure the lao lao was like top, right? The musubi, I haven't had one like that before. Yay. I mean, it blows away everything I had yesterday. And you guys are open usually for breakfast? Yeah, Monday through Friday, 6.30 to about 12.30. Awesome. So guys, now you know, when you come to Kona, definitely come to the? Feeding Leaf Kitchen and Okazuya. And Okazuya, and Okazuya. All right, guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you the next travel food adventure on the big island of Hawaii. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here coming at you from beautiful Volcanoes National Park on the big island of Hawaii. Today I'm extremely excited because I'm gonna explore the national park in depth. This place became a national park in 1916 and later in 1987 it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. If you guys didn't know, the island of Hawaii has four active volcanoes. Here there's two of them. The most active volcano in the world and also the biggest shield volcano in the world. And after we explore the national park, we're going to drive to Hilo and there we're going to the Cezanne Fish Market. The oldest fish market in Hilo and there we can see fishermen, we can see all the fish and we can eat some poke. Judy. Hey David, how Pleasure. are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So what are we doing today? Today. So I'm with Hawaii Volcanoes National Park and a nonprofit called Friends of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park and what we're gonna do is tour around the next four hours and enjoy and get a deeper connection to this lovely amazing place. And right here where we are, woo, it's steaming up as you can That's see. That's right. Because the heat's coming up. Yes, so and we're why? right on top of the summit where these cracks are so deep that they're going hitting these hot rocks and the rainwater is evaporating the uh, the rain is turning into steam. No, you can see it here. It's like it's steaming up. So we're gonna go for about an hour walk right now. We're gonna stop about four different times. Let's go. 
Yes, you're looking into the summit, which is a collapsed caldera that we know through our Mo'olelo, our stories of Pele, Hanuamea, and he, Aka Ikapolio Pele, collapsed about 600 years ago in geologic time. On the far end of that caldera is a 1,700 foot deep collapse that was caused in 2018. So the first time that, that a collapse of that magnitude happened in our lifetime. It's pretty amazing. It's just, but you feel the heat like all over like that? Just no, like out of nowhere? Cracks and at the okay. So certain cracks and at the summit you'll feel the heat, but like out of nowhere, it hits you like a little sauna, you know? Don't take any material off it, but I would like you to stick your hand out right here. This is our native for um, our native fern called hapu'u, and I would like you to feel this material and you tell me what you think the Hawaiian things look like. Okay. Oh wow. So that's called pulu. It's almost like a sponge. Yes. Oh, so wow. what do you think they would have used it for? The Hawaiians. Clean themselves? Great. That is a really good, good guess because What's this that? material was taken, put back into a lab and dissected and it's filled, filled with biotic, um, antibiotic material. So if you're out surfing or up here cutting, you got, you got yourself cut, you take a little bit of this pulu, you pull it off, except none of us are going to do that. We're going to leave everything just as it is and you'd put it on your cut. It'd be like having Neosporin. So some of them have it, some of them don't. Just know that the Ohia covers 80% of our cover story here. And then, let's see, we have Koa come right here. These, this light green tree right here is the Koa. Okay, so this rock, Ulumao Pohako O Pele, is the ever-growing rock of Pele as a symbol to remind us that this island is still growing. This name of this house, everybody has a house name, right? Mine is Mekua Puahuna. Mauna is the hidden flower on the mountain. This is Hale Noa o Kiliwea. Noa mean it's for Kane as well as Wahine. So many different houses built for many different reasons. Canoe houses, weaving houses, cooking houses. This one be sleeping houses. This one's for, for Wahine and Kane. And it was built for you. Standing at attention, out of respect. Hey, ho mai. Eho mai ik iki mai luna mai e O na ha mea huna noya O na melie Eho mai Eho mai Eho mai Eho mai ik iki mai luna mai e Mahalo Ekoma mai means come come No that yes the openings four feet so you taller than four feet make sure you duck come on in definitely taller than four feet <laughs> so this is Hale Noa Okiliwea this was just recently built completed in uh, the summer summertime it's uh, it's all built of invasive species we wanted to preserve protect our native species but it's a remembrance for you for when you come it was built for you to come and go oh this is what it's like this is how they would have lived built out of Chinese fan palm hickory the kiavi and the ironwood and all lashed together with paracord eight vials of paracord and the main reason that they build it out of trees is because whatever the invasive trees. The invasive trees. So yes. when you know when we go away, this will also fall and go yes. back to the earth. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, my Good. So where we're going next. We're, okay. So next, we're gonna descend down into the the caldera, and we're gonna be going to Haakulamana, the gathering place of the birds. The weather has changed so drastically in one hour. It was raining. It was foggy. Now it's sunny, and beautiful. Stop raining. So Judy, you were saying that ginger is the most invasive species? Not the most invasive, but a really top five ginger is one of them because the rhizomes grow so tight together that the seed bank, they can't get through the native plant. So it, see how it just snuffs out everything. You only see ginger. So smells good, brought in on purpose, introduced on purpose, but very harmful to the native plants. So this area is called uh, sulfur banks on the sign, but really the Hawaiian name for it is Ha'akula Manu, the gathering place of the birds, Manu bird. This is where the Hawaiians would come because of this open area. The ground is relatively hot, so hot that the trees don't grow so much here. And it's been like this for hundreds of years. If you look above here, you're seeing the collapse. We're really close to this intense collapse that would have happened about 600 years ago. It was a huge battle. You can just imagine the amount of earthquakes that were happening for this collapse to take place. This was a battle between Pele Hanuamea and her sister Hiiaka Ikapolio Pele, of course, over her man Lohiao. 
And so basically, back in 2018, there was a collapse right here, right? Yes. There's a collapse. This is part of the collapse. We're gonna go now drive to the other part where we're gonna see the, the extended version of this collapse. So it's kind of, you can, when you go camping, you have this collapsible bowls. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're experiencing is just this outer side of the caldera and we're gonna go into the inner of it. I'm gonna say. All right, so back in 2018, there was a collapse and there was basically a huge lake of magma or lava. It was a massive lake of lava, yes. And then what happened? It just got drained down. It drained down. down and went down <clears throat> along the East Rift 30 miles from here and then popped up in 22 different fissures, creating that 2018 eruption for three months. All right, let's go. All right, let's do it. David, you're at military, Kilauea Military Camp established in 1916 and from here we're going to hike about two minutes down as close as we can get to this collapsed caldera wow what a beautiful day it's turned out to be incredible look at this military camp so these are the bunkers housing these are, yeah these are housing so recreational as well as training facility and people come in here the the military they get their their time off and they come up and they rent these little cottages here it's quiet area, okay. Whoa. Look at this. So that's the caldera right there, huh? Yes. Caldera is three by five miles wide, and this area that you're looking at in front of us is a 1,700 foot deep collapse where from 2008 to 2018 hosted a one of the largest, the largest lava lake in the world as of 2017. Next up, we're headed to the East Rift. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what's the East Rift? The East Rift is a weak spot in the volcano going off in the east direction, and that, if you followed it for 30 miles, would take us to the 2018 eruption. We're gonna go about seven miles from here and check out a 1969 to 74 flow, get right up on that East Rift and look down into the fissure. The 1974 eruption, it lasted three days. In some areas, it's 20 feet thick. We're gonna pull in right here, David. It's a really good place to get a couple shots of some tree molds. Tree molds are when it hits the tree, the lava, go ahead and stop here. The lava hits the tree and wraps up around it, but then keeps on flowing. And if you just pan around and go to this end, you'll see how very small of a lava flow this was, but really, really thick. Oh, wow. Look at that. You can see the lava, hardened rock. This is a tree mold. This is evidence of what was once here. It was the Ohia tree. It shows you the, the bark, the imprint of the bark. So the lava came coming down, wrapped around the tree, okay. and then kept on flowing. And from that, that heat of the lava burning out the tree and having that tree flow away. And then what are these? This is something that a crazy tourist did. They're making their little oh, okay. with rocks on top of <laughs> I was like, what is this? And we don't want to encourage that. So whenever you see these, that are not on the trail. See, they're marked by rangers, use these all the time for markings to find your way across lava flows. But then tourists will come and they'll build up these ahus that have mean nothing. And so they're a distraction. And sometimes tourists, will, other people will follow it and get lost. All right, let's continue. Woo! We're on a road that used to go seven miles longer all the way to the ocean. If you pan in front of us, all you're gonna see 100 feet from here is Lava wasn't even there 50 years ago. Yeah. This is the youngest mountain, possibly the, the youngest mountain on earth. And what is this area? This is called Mauna Ulu eruption. We're exploring a 1969 to 1974 flow. Oh, we're hearing a, a helicopter come over us right now which is the only time we're having helicopters is when we have scientists going out and observing some type of making observations on the volcano. The front glow that you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. You see the peacock glass? Yeah, that's, that's what I was talking about. Whoa. This is awesome. It's like a mini mountain here. Oh yeah, a rampart. Rampart, a rampart. So this is this picture spewing on top and top and top of each other, building layer upon layer, and this is the remnants of what's left. Rampart on this side, north side, no rampart on that side. How come? It flowed down all the way to the ocean. 
That'll be our last stop is where we're looking upon Mauna Ulu flow going all the way off into the ocean. So this spot right here, David, is the birthplace of this eruption, Mauna Ulu, that started in 1969, lasted until 1974. So we're exploring this birthplace before we descend down further upon it. So as she was saying, this is like the birthplace. So what happened is it was erupting and the lava would come out, but it also spew back down. And as soon as the lava hit the atmosphere, it would cool. So it's like 2000 degrees or something. And then it would come up here and it'd be like 70 degrees. So it'd cool down and then solidify really fast. 50 years ago, all this was a forest, right? So what are these small hills? I was asking her and she's like, oh, that's actually old trees. So what happened is some of these, as you can see right here, looks like a mushroom. That's where the tree was, it's a tree stump, obviously. And over here, you can actually see that where two different trees, like the inside was, because it didn't like flow too much. You can see right here, look at this. One, two. So Judy, we're walking on a lava flow right now. We are, we're walking on a lava flow that was just like the one that we were on. Same rock, but different uh, feeling, right? It's, cr it's clinkery yeah. at Pahoy Hoy, and, it, and that happens. They learned how come sometimes Aak, how come sometimes Pahoy Hoy at this Mauna Ulu eruption of the big mass amount of lava moving behind, bringing this, moving at a, a quite uh, fast pace. So the Aa flows faster and the Pahoy Hoy flows slower. All right, David, let's go to the last spot, Ke'alakomo Overlook. So right now we're at a flow, the Mauna Ulu flow that's descending all the way down to the ocean. Check this out, give it a pan. And if you look to the left, you'll see Mauna Ulu. That's the birthplace. Right here, first one. Perfect. Yeah. Wow, look at this view. Woo! Amazing. Pacific Ocean right there. Look up pointer over here. Wow. It's awesome. So we're at our last spot, Ke'ala Ke Como Overlook, uh, looking upon the Mauna Ulu flow. We started at the birthplace and now we ended at, at where it was flowing into the ocean. Check this out. Incredible view. As you can see, it's a cliff right here and then it goes down a lava flow and then you have the ocean. So there was villages before but there was, uh, around like 100 years ago, there was a huge tsunami, so it took out those villages, so now no one lives here in the National Park. And that's it, guys. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get in the car and drive straight to Hilo. It's about a 30 minute drive. And we're going to the fish market to try some poke. Let's go. After a 40 minute drive, we arrived here in Hilo. And if you guys don't know about the island of Hawaii, there's two major towns, Hilo and Kona. Hilo is on the east side, Kona is on the west side. They both have international airports. You can fly from the mainland US to either of these airports, and you can also go to Oahu from either airport. So, you know, you can come in or out from either one. So, for us, we came in and we're going out from Hilo, and we are about two minutes away from the fish market. I'm very hungry, can't wait to try some poke. The cool thing about the poke here is that they always give you these big clumps of ahi tuna. So it's not just like small, like in the States, they're bigger and they have so many different ones. So some, some are like spicier, some are like sweeter, some are just like normal, like regular, just with like a little bit of herbs. Oh, I can't wait. I love the ahi tuna poke in Hawaii. All right guys, so we made it here to the fish market. Suisan, Suisan fish market. So this fish market dates back to 1907, so over 110 years old. And as soon as you enter, as you can see right in front of us, we have like 30 different options. So poke is basically fresh cut fish. So they have like ahi tuna poke to the left, a huge variety, ahi spicy oyster, they have garlic, mango habanero, guava kimchi, and to the right they have different seafood salads, which is like oysters, um, what else you got, shrimp, scallops, so many good things. I think I'm gonna get a variety, probably get like 10 different things and see what's the best. And because it's a fish market, they obviously sell fresh fish, right? Like ready to go. Over here to the left, you see, it's like a, you know, fish on ice. They have tons of different fish. I don't know exactly what each fish is here, but this one like looks like a barracuda. So you could just say, hey, I want that fish. You know, they can either cut it for you or you take the whole thing and they sell it by the pound and they pack it up for you right here. Sultan, my man. So Sultan's gonna be doing something really special for me. We're gonna go behind and I'm gonna try a little bit of everything. There's how many different things we got here? Like 30? Like 26 different cookies. We're not gonna try 26. We're gonna try maybe like 10. Okay. All right, 10. All right, so probably let's start with uh, Whatever you think. Ahi Hawaiian? Traditional Ahi Hawaiian poke. 
So this is like the most authentic coffee, right? Authentic. All Hawaiian products. Mm. Limu, inamona, Hawaiian salt, Hawaiian chili pepper flakes. I mean, it's perfect. Onion. No sauce. You have a crunch from the onion. A little salty. Super fresh. And I love the chunks. It's like really big chunks. Alright, next one. Salt poke. I got spicy ahi. Let's do it. It's like a staple in Hilo. All around the islands anyway. Uh, spicy ahi is pretty famous. Sriracha, mayo, masago onions. Okay. So this is a staple here in Hilo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spicy mayo. Spicy mayo. Mm, delicious. A little hot. Not too spicy. Not too bad. Just right. Next one. California roll. Uh, cucumber. Okay, so this one's a little different because there's also crab in it. So it's almost like a like a ahi poke crab salad. Yeah, yeah. That's a good crab salad, man. Wow. Mm, nice and creamy. Yeah. Dude, that's delicious. And you said that's, a, that's one of the most popular, right? Because that's the fish yeah. batch. Next pork here, ahi spicy oyster. Really hot. Oyster sauce and Carolina Reaper. Perfect. Very hot. Good though. Oyster sauce. Why is it spicy? Because the oyster sauce or you're adding something else? No, oh, it's a Carolina Reaper. Mm. One of the hottest peppers in the world. Oh. That's my type of poke, man. Yeah. Whoa. That was good. Yeah, it's, you, you feel it around your tongue, around your throat. Yeah. Oh. Dude. Throat I'm, I'm going to take a big bowl of that. Next one. Ahi spicy honey garlic poke. It's a honey garlic sauce. Brand new flavor. Trying it out. Mm. Nice, a little sweeter with the honey, right? That was pretty amazing. I think the best one is the next one. Mango habanero. Mango habanero, yes. Let's try it. Mango please. Sweet and spicy. on the planet. Dude, now that's the best one. I thought the, uh, the oyster one was the best one. This was the best one. It's pretty good. Not too spicy, and I love the mango to it, you know? Gives it a different flavor. Sweet. Guava kimchi. Guava glaze and kimchi base. It's a yellow tip. Another sweet and spicy. We like to mix it up. Guava kimchi. The sweet and spicy mm -hmm. is good for... No, what I love is the kimchi flavor. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that That's fermented sweet. cabbage. Wow. I think these are the most unique poppers I've ever had in my life. Everything is so different. Obviously the base, ahi tuna, but then the spices, the flavors, just everything is completely like diverse here. Yeah, you get like a taste from each culture. So people from all around the world come over here to get pokea. Ahi tegu. Mm. It's almost like having sriracha, right? Kind but, of like very similar. a sweet sriracha. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude. These are like my jam, man. You guys should sell like a, a, a tasting, like a, you know, yeah. a plane with 10. Like a tasting uh, platter. Uh. Magic ahi poke. And he's saying the reason they call it magic is it disappears like magic. Yeah. Plenty of people come down for the magic. Uh. Oh, man. That might be the best one, man. I don't know, it's hard, it's hard. Yeah, They're all the best. I think for me, I'm gonna have to go with the spicier ones for sure, but the flavors, man, and the like, the freshness of it, every single day they come in, right? Every day we get uh, local caught ahi from our uh, local fishermen. We got 40 fishermen in Tucson. And if you guys didn't see, the water is literally right behind the building. Yep. Right there. So they go off the dock, fish all day, all night, come back in, drop off. All ahi's fresh. So after trying the ahi tuna poke, it blew my mind. I went and got a few more things, okay? So I have here, this is like a spicy crab salad. Over here we have wakame. So wakame is basically seaweed. So delicious seaweed, I, I really love it. It's kelp basically. And over here we have octopus. So it's a kimchi octopus. And then we also got salmon, but it's like a wasabi salmon. And then I had to, I got some more of the ahi tuna poke, the oyster one, the spicy one. So freaking good. So opening them up. Yeah, right there. Right there. Look at that. The 
This looks amazing, amazing. So here we go. The way I suggest starting is definitely with the salads. So I'm gonna go with the wakame first. Love wakame. Mm. It's a little slimy. It's very green. Basically kelp. Wow. Really, it's a little crunchy. Mm, nice bites. I personally could eat like huge bowls of this. Like I love it. Mm, crab salad, delicious, creamy. Obviously, that has mayo. It also has some caviar in there. And what else? I think that's uh, has to be cabbage. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Probably the best crab salad I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. The freshness, kind of fresher. Now we're gonna dive on to the octopus and the salmon. So right here. This is salmon with wasabi. Wow. It's like a little spicy. Big, big chunks of salmon. Oh man, you got a little bit of vegetables in there too. So you have some onions, you have some green onions. And right here we have the octopus. Nice tender octopus. The best part about this one is that it has kimchi. So the kimchi like sauce, you know that flavor of kimchi? Love it. One of my favorite things in the world is kimchi. Nice and spicy. For me, it's the best thing on the planet. I love seafood. If I could be, I'd be pescatarian. And here we have like everything. The tuna, love it. Salmon, octopus, crab, kelp. Oh. Mm. Oh man, this octopus is too delicious. And lastly, we got the ahi tuna. Mmm. So good, no spicy. Mm. Let's see, Ooh, that was way more spicy. Whoa, <clears throat> onions, green onions. Let me pull that on that. And then relax with that. It's a little hot. When you come to Hawaii, don't stop eating it. It's probably my favorite poke of all time. So I gotta say, between the salmon wasabi and the the oyster sauce poke, they're both really spicy. Mmm. This one's more mild, but it's gonna be really hot. Mmm. Calm it down. Get some of this. This is too good. Too good. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the day. We started off in the Volcanoes National Park. We explored there for like four hours. We saw different areas of the caldera. We went, we walked around, we hiked, and then we came down to Hilo. Only like a 45 minute drive. Came to Hilo and came to this fish market, the Suisan, Suisan Fish Market, the oldest fish market, over 110 years old. And I had some of the best poke of my life here. You have to try it. Come here, taste everything. Just get a little bowl of everything. You'll love it. Well, guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Oahu. That's where I'm flying next.